and Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Come on! They're too good. And both of those screenplays were co-written by my guest today. She has also written dozens of books, many of which are bestsellers. I'm talking today with Delia Efron. Now, her last name may sound familiar to you. She's the younger sister of Nora Ephron, queen of the romantic comedy, a voice for a generation of women. Get this, she wrote When Harry Met Sally and Sleepless in Seattle. I happened to pick up Delia's latest book, Left on 10th, A Second Chance at Life. And I'm wondering, man, why haven't we also been talking about Delia all these years? Here's what you should know about Delia. Just like her sister, her writing is incredible. It's so beautiful. I just didn't want to put the book down. But she doesn't just write to pay bills. She writes to heal. Oh, my God, I'm so excited to see you. You are brilliant. Come on. (laughs) <laughs> I, I, they're not thank enough you. there's not enough dog ears or highlighters for this book <laughs> oh my goodness thank you so much wow that's wonderful wow you're just what we the doctor ordered for this time in life oh thank you very much <laughs> that's really good to wow hear. first of all what a delight it is to see you in person i have to say um there are books that are packed with life lessons This one's overflowing. It's called Left on 10th, A Second Chance at Life. And I want to talk about the second chance, but can I just talk about the first chance first? Can we go back to the beginning? (laughs) Do you mind? Of course, Okay. whatever. (laughs) I'm sure, Delia, a lot of people um, know you by, they know your last name very well, uh, Efron. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, of course, know Nora Efron. I mean, I know for a lot of your life, you grew up and you have siblings. You've got Nora as your older sister. You've got two younger siblings. Mm-hmm. What? How would you describe yourself in the group of four? Oh, I was the funny one. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, we all get the little label in yeah. the family, and that was my label. Um, I'm not sure what my other sisters were labeled, but that was definitely... And every time I said something funny at dinner, my father would shout, that's a great line, write it down. <laughs> so... I mean, we were all four, we're all four writers, and my parents were writers, and they were just raising writers. I mean, my mother was very proud that she had a career, and she was a screenwriter, and uh, she was, I mean, really fierce about it. Mm. And that's what her daughters, you will go to New York, and you will have a career. That's all she said. She never said a thing about, about getting married, having children, nothing. Wow. In fact, she often said, elope. Oh, she did? How come? Oh, yes. I mean, a a mother of four daughters who was not the least interested in seeing her daughter's wedding. I mean, that was my mother. When you say that she was a writer, she she and your father were more than just writers. I mean, they were writers. Tell me some of the work they put out. Well, they wrote, well, first of all, you, you made a lot more movies then. And they were, they were contract writers at 20th Century Fox. And they wrote, um, Daddy Longlegs with Fred Astaire. They wrote No Business Like Show Business with um, Marilyn Monroe. They wrote The Jackpot with Jimmy Stewart. But they wrote continually. Mm -hmm. They just had a very nice run in the 50s. So with your mom uh, not stressing marriage and stressing a career, did you think, um, were you interested in in marriage or was what she said the gold standard? I got her message very loud and clear. But I also saw a movie when I was about 11 called Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, which is the most, oh, it's just, it's the romantic comedy of all time. I mean, it really is. It's all about Jane Powell. She, she, she marries this, in one afternoon, she falls in love with a backwoodsman and moves to the backwoods to make flapjacks for his six brothers. And all I wanted to do was get married and make flapjacks for someone. I saw that movie 16 times. I learned the power of a romantic comedy very young. Oh, wow. I really did. So there was a little war going on. Partly, you know, I wanted to have a career. I wanted to be that child. And, uh, and the other part of me, I just wanted this other life. If you were not writing... Is there something else when you were a young kid that you thought you wanted to do? No. Look, my sister Nora was, she was like shot out of a cannon. And and she was going to be a writer when she was two. And we all knew it. And 
Um, and so for me to be a writer, well, I had to not just take on my parents' career. I had to take on Nora's career. But I, I sort of, look, you can blow your 20s and still have a life. And I did blow my 20s. <laughs> I just married the first man who asked me, and I moved to Providence, Rhode Island. And I, I got to be about 28, and I thought, what am I doing here? You know, I, 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 you have one life. You know, get this through your, your head. So at this point, I had a crochet business, all mm -hmm. right? I was crocheting, and I went to a party in, in New York, and there was an editor there from Simon & Schuster, and I said to him, um, I know you'd never be interested in this, but would you like a book about crocheting? And he said yes. He said yes. And the next thing I knew, I wrote a book about crocheting. And I didn't think I was writing. I was sneaking up on it, you know. I was just writing directions for things. So then uh, I started to think, you know, I think I want to be a writer. Hmm. And I said to my husband, my first husband, that's a very important part of the story. Mm -hmm. I said to him, I think I want to be a writer. And you know how important it is to speak a dream out loud? Yes. And he said, uh, I don't want you to be a writer. And I said, why? And he said, suppose you become famous. I don't want you to become famous. This is how pathetic I was. I said to him, I promise I won't be famous. I'm, I'm actually worried I've been keeping that promise. But anyway, I, I absolutely knew. I absolutely knew I had to leave him. I mean, if someone wants to crush your dreams with his big fat foot, you just better get out. And so you did. So was, I, it, was the I, breakup hard? I, yeah. So then I... You know, I called my girlfriends in New York, and I got on a train, and I left Providence. And, and that was it. I thought, I have one year. I'm going to be a writer in one year. I'm going to have to do something else. Okay. And I figured out, I mean, I had messed up my 20s so badly that I, I made a plan. I, I really recommend making plans if you're going to make big changes. Okay. And I said, in a year, I have to get published in the New York Times. That was your plan? That's the only thing that's going to launch me. Now, where, I hate to compare you to your sister, but where was your sister's career at this point? Oh, my sister was writing this amazing column in Esquire mm -hmm. about being a woman, and she was an editor at Esquire, and she gave me one of my first assignments. But she was totally always mm -hmm. my, she was always a mentor. Yeah. I mean, she just loved my work. And, and I was about nine months, no, almost a year, really. I was down to $500. Mm. And I was sitting at home eating chocolate pudding my way. The type you cook, you know, so it yeah. had skin on the top. Film, yeah. And I was scooping the pudding out from underneath and saving the skin for last. And I thought, I'm eating like a child. This is how writers get ideas, by the way. This, okay. it's, this is ridiculous. And I thought, I'm going to write a piece about how children eat food. And I wrote 500 words about, I, they were just directions. I knew how to do that because I'd written these crochet books. So I wrote How to Eat Like a Child, and I sold it to the New York Times. Oh, my gosh. And they ran, it was very funny. I ran, it ran on the last page of the Sunday magazine, and on Monday I was offered a book contract. You are kidding. No, and, and that book was a bestseller, a huge bestseller. What was your, what was your how first to, book? How to Eat Like a Child and Other Lessons in Not Being a Grown-Up. Oh my God, brilliant. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. You'll get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, 
NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. I turn on my computer. I go online. Welcome. Welcome. And my breath catches in my chest until I hear three little words. You've got, got mail. mail. So for people who don't realize, You've Got Mail was not just written by Nora Ephron. It was written by Nora yeah. and Delia Ephron. Right. Just in case, I'm just letting our listeners Thank know. You they very may much. Or, they may or may not realize that. Um, so, you know, your career, you write your book, your career is humming, but love is still something that you're you're looking for after you've written right. your first book. Um, how did you how did you meet your second husband? Um, he, uh, he was going to see a movie in the neighborhood with a good friend of mine and they got the time wrong. She said, let's stop in and see Delia. And mm -hmm. he walked up the stairs and was that like was that. That was that. You knew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. I did get smarter about men. You know, I was saying to myself, you know from the beginning, people begin as they mean to continue. Mm. That is a rule I began to live by. People begin as they mean to continue. Okay. So... If someone shows up late on your first date, they are going to always be late for a date, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. It's a very good rule when you take a job, when you meet a boss. It's a rule for friendship, it's, and it turns out it's a great rule for men. What'd you learn about Jerry? Well, Jerry's a writer, and mm -hmm. I needed to be married to a writer, and he was just, the, he was just a wonderful man mm -hmm. and very, very supportive. It was just a great match. How many years did you, were you guys married? We were married 32 and we were together 38. Wow. I feel like in my life, everything good happened to me after 50. Everything. So mm -hmm. it seemed weird to me to think that sometimes it all lumps together. And also, conversely, sometimes the tough lessons all get jammed up at a certain time too. I remember when your sister was sick, I didn't know Nora was sick. In fact, I think we had her on the show, and I remembered uh, not knowing about that because that was an illness that she kept private, right? Yes, she did. Everybody makes their own choices when they get sick, but if you were really famous and you're public about something like that, I mean, there's just, you know, you leave the house and someone says on the street corner, you know, I'm so sorry, are you okay? You know, mm -hmm. there's no privacy at all. And mm -hmm. uh, Nora was intensely private, and she wanted to run her it the way she she just did. I mean, I'm not someone that, that can keep secrets. I'm not someone who's suited to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was interesting how differently, I mean, just to yeah. me that, you know, because we were so alike in many ways. You know, it's hard for a lot of people, I'm sure, listening to imagine many of us have siblings and sisters and the idea that we're going to be holding our sister's hand. How, how did you navigate that, that grief? Well, the, the really difficult thing was that, I mean, she died in 2012, and, for, and she was sick for the six years before. And at that time, they, they tested me to see if I had, was a match for her. She had uh, myelodysplastic syndrome, and it leads almost inevitably to a fierce leukemia. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that can cure it is a bone marrow transplant, uh, all, also known as a stem cell transplant. So they tested me, but they also discovered that my bone marrow was slightly wonky. Mm -hmm. So in addition to worrying about her, I was worrying about me. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, my husband had prostate cancer and it was going to, and he was going to die from that, that had metastasized. So I was dealing with a level of anxiety during those years that was absolutely, I mean, ast really, I think back on it. I, I mean, it was an astonishing amount of anxiety. Can can I ask, uh, just to dig in a little bit, because I keep hearing from people who are going through horrible grief, how did you go about a, a typical day? Like, how did you get out of bed to help your sister, help your husband, worry about yourself, go about your business? How, how did you find that strength? I wrote. Mm. Um, it was the same way I got over this trauma of getting leukemia myself. So, um, your sister passed away and it must have been like you said when you're a public person your grief is public and so is the yeah. loss did you find comfort in knowing that other people felt the loss or did you kind of wish you could have just grieved on your own 
You know, I think I actually, truthfully, I think I would have rather grieved on my own. I mean, I, I loved the love of my friends who just, you know, surrounded me with love. And, and that was just incredible. But I th- I think, you know, this is just to be honest. I, I was trying to think about Caroline Kennedy. I'm thinking her whole life, someone said, walked up to her and said, um, I was driving on the on the Taconic when I heard your father died. I, you know, your father's picture is on my breakfast table, um, you know, whatever, on the wall in my house. I, I remember his, he was so incredible to me. And she is just getting mm-hmm. thousands of her whole life has been that. And there is a lot of wanting to share. Mm-hmm. And I completely understand that Nora was profoundly important for women, and she was an amazing person. So it was both that I loved getting and also that it, it was overwhelming. Mm-hmm. It was a little overwhelming. Yeah. And then to still be in the process of, of caring for your husband at that point. Yeah. Um, and to mm-hmm. watch that, because that was, he was three more years before he passed. Yes. He passed in 2015. And what did you lose the day he passed? Well, just everything in my life changed because, um, you know, the strangest thing about living in a house that you've lived in with someone all those years, it's like they, they're, they're on the walls, they're in the kitchen with you, they're, but they're not, you know. They're, hmm. I'm sitting on his couch watching television in his office, and I'm just feeling, you know, a, a tremendous displacement. Hmm. And everywhere I went, I felt like, what am I doing here? And and it's hard. By the way, it's very hard when someone dies because you've got you've got all the death certificates and you have to close out accounts and you have to change everything. And people mm-hmm. are not easy. I mean, and that's how I ended up. Yeah. When well, my internet <clears throat> crashed. Well, that is funny because <laughs> I mean, first of all, the fact that you guys had two landlines at your house, one in his name and one in yours, and all yeah. you want. Why did you want to cancel his landline? Like, that was something you just wanted to get done. It just seemed like a place to begin. Yeah. You know, it seemed like a place to begin. And one of the things about trying to cancel his landline is that it's a rite of passage for almost everyone who loses a mate hmm. is canceling their if their cell phone, if not their landline. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is one of the things. Because when I tried to do it and got into this terrible battle with my phone company and they they not only shut the landline down, but they then crashed my internet and couldn't get it back. Um, and I got so crazy that I wrote a very funny, sad piece about it for the New York Times. And I can't tell you how much mail I got. I mean, we got so much mail on that piece. And it was all people who'd had battles with their phone company. And in the same situation, I mean, it was, it was really, it, it's a really big thing. <laughs> right. When you're grieving and you're trying to take care of business at the same time and yeah. you keep running into roadblocks. You really can't go a little wild. I, st- I went crazy. I actually did a little bit. NBC News. Streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels. From the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Uh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now. 
Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Well, in addition to the whole truckload of mail that you got and email, I'm sure, um, you got one special email, which you were, how, how old were you at that point when, you're, when your husband passed? 72. 72 years old. And all of a sudden you get an email from a, from a gentleman named Peter. And right. what, this wasn't his first interaction with you. No, we had had to we still can't agree on how many dates we had because <laughs> i don't remember it at all but i think it was two dates but it might have been three 54 years before when i was 18 years old and my sister nora had fixed us up so i got this very very charming email from peter mm -hmm. who was a psychiatrist a jungian analyst living in the bay area and he said you know we had we had a couple of dates, but um, so it's just the most, it was the most charming note. It was lovely. And so, of course, I sent it to at least three girlfriends to see what they thought, because at that point, I wasn't leaving the house practically without calling a girlfriend to mm -hmm. see if it was a good idea. So um, I wrote him back. Well, first I Googled him, of course. What else? You know what I love about you? I mean, I'm, I'm just talking to you for the first time. Your heart didn't get hard. Like, it's not even, it doesn't, I mean, I'm sure it has a film on it because every heart does after going through some knocks and bumps. But yeah. to be giggly and, and excited and, and giddy uh, about an email um, is pretty cool to, to have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was very frightened, though. I mean, there's a lot of guilt about surviving and losing your mate. And so I had sort of considered for the first time the idea of somebody else. And Peter didn't write me for five months after that. He wrote oh. me three days after the first anniversary of Jerry's death. Oh. And I think that year alone is a really, it's, you go through all the holidays, you go through um, all sorts of experiences um, in the first year. So I think it was just also, Beshert, which is the word that Peter and I use, Beshert, it's a Yiddish word meaning uh, destined soulmate or, or mm -hmm. something fated to be. And it, so it was very Beshert when I received it. Let's talk about the guilt part, because that's an interesting piece. And I think anyone who's ever gone out on an, even a single date after mm -hmm. losing a spouse is, must struggle with that. How did you deal with it? What did you do? Well, I mean, I remember when he finally did come, come to the house, which was, and he flew east then about three weeks later. And by that time, we had completely fallen in love over email, you know. I remember him being in the kitchen and thinking that Jerry was there in the kitchen with us, wow. you know, that I wasn't alone with Peter, huh. that he that he was there. And I, after being so able to talk about anything, I was suddenly shyer, different, hmm. worried, and um, and we had to really in a way, start again when you're 72, when death is so close, you can read out, reach out and touch it, you know? And so I got very frightened that, that weekend, although I was extremely attracted to him. So that did mitigate it a bit. Yeah. And he's the one, most wonderful person. Sometimes you meet a wonderful person like Peter and you're like, okay, I had my share of knocks. Um, I've already, I've lost two people I love and now it's finally time for my love, my second love story to start. But your, your doctor gave you a blood test like she'd been doing over the course of a long time. And 10 years, every six months, she tested my blood to see if I was okay. And every Every six months, she'd say, well, this is the most boring blood I've seen today, and send me off. She's a wonderful doctor. It was four months after Peter and I had just fallen head over heels for each other, and I went to my six-month appointment, and it just, it just came up, leukemia, oh my just God. right there. It's so stunning to get a diagnosis like that, and it was confirmed that it was AML. Uh, but, you know, every leukemia is different under a microscope. In spite of it being that my sister had AML and I had AML, we had different AMLs, basically. Yeah. 
And my doctor just kept saying to me, you know, first of all, there are new treatments. I mean, the, it is amazing of blood cancer, the, the progress since 2012 when she died. Amazing. So there were new drugs and there were new treatments. And she said, and you're not your sister. Mm -hmm. uh, under a microscope, you're wow. not your sister. Wow. That's all she meant. But for me... You know, I mean, I just tried to be, I spent my the first years of my life just trying to do everything she did and, and failing miserably because she was going around the track so fast I couldn't keep up. But, um, you know, to say that to me when I, that I could survive and she wasn't able to, it was betrayal. Mm -hmm. It felt Ooh. like betrayal as well as empowerment. You know, it was both things at once. It was opposites, you know, and I just kept saying to myself, you're not your sister, you know, and maybe you can have a different outcome. At the time, your boyfriend, Peter, uh, in the middle of all this, who knows what what someone's going to do when they find out that the person that they've fallen for for four months is is very ill. What did what did Peter do? He'd flown in after my diagnosis and we were sitting and I'm making French toast and I'm thinking about, you know, I'm checking into the hospital Tuesday and I, my mind is very... And he's sitting at the table and he says, we should get married. And then he kind of heard himself say it. And he's, he just like popped up out of the chair and said, will you marry me? <laughs> and I said, yes. And because we all, even Peter says he always knew we were going to get married. So I said, yes. And then we went on uh, Monday, we went and got a license and we bought a ring. And on Tuesday, I checked into the hospital. And on Thursday, I had my first. Uh, chemotherapy, and on Saturday, we got married. Where, we had a very where? few friends come to the dining room on the 14th floor, and and my friend Jesse presided, and we got married. At the hospital? Yeah, at the hospital. Do you think about <laughs> how Nora might have had a play in this? I mean, how, how many times do you guys well, talk about just, that? Well, just, you know, I mean, Peter says we were not meant to be together when we were young. Hmm. And that we met when we did was when we were meant to meet, and I believe that's true too. But there's no question I feel like she had a hand in it. My, well, she had a hand in so much of my life, let's face it, but she certainly, this was really something when he said that Nora had fixed us up. You know what I She was always fixing me up, by the way. But oh, she was? Never as beautifully as this, yes, right? This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. fans ready to unlock our true crime mysteries try dateline premium on apple podcasts you'll get early access to originals plus bonus content and everything is ad free so head to apple podcast now to subscribe this is what it looks and feels the latest like. the bigger piece of the puzzle we begin comes. tonight with breaking news how much water ultimately will be forced inland whenever it happens wherever you are nbc news streaming free now for breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You'll get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. <laughs> Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You know what I find remarkable about you? I think if someone else was in your exact circumstances, losing a sister and then losing a husband, I can see a life going a completely different way. Like, I just oh. wonder, because I think it's easy to retreat and say, these are the cards I was dealt, and you know what? I already had my good times before, and maybe I should just ride this out and, you know, do my thing. Why do you think you did not become that person? I actually think it's because I like to laugh. Oh, really? Yeah, I like to have fun. And I just think that didn't go away. Mm -hmm. That's well. all I can put it to. Delia Efron, thank you so much for being with us on the podcast. Thank you so much. I had so much fun. Oh, me too. Thanks for the laughs, too. See you later. Okay. Bye-bye.
If you ask most people, they'd say reaching the NFL would be a career pinnacle, the top of the mountain. But for my guest today, the NFL was just the beginning. As a linebacker who played on three pro teams retiring in 2015, Emmanuel Acho was just getting started. Turns out Emmanuel's calling was off the field in missionary work and more recently, social justice. Just under two years ago, Emmanuel decided to create and host an online video series of conversations about racism called Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. It's since been viewed more than 80 million times and went on to win an Emmy in 2021. And now Emmanuel is setting out to help others find meaning in their lives. Emmanuel, what a pleasure it is to have you on Making Space. I feel like you are our perfect guest because you are somebody who follows uh, a part of you that isn't always your intellect. It isn't always your pro-con list. You go with something that is beyond that. Since you were a kid, let's go back. Let's go back. Since you were a kid and you were making decisions on where to go, what to do, what led you? I've never been asked that question before. I am led by my convictions. And so when, when I say conviction, what do, we, what do you mean? I'm led by some innate inner yearning to move, to act, to go. Um, that's truly what led me. It's my convictions. And so if I ever feel convicted to move in a certain way, a certain direction, that is the manner in which I go. Sometimes it makes no practical sense at all. Um, but I just feel like you have to move by convictions. I mean, look, when you're a kid, you don't know what the risks are. There are no risks. You jump off the swing, you jump off, you'll realize later that that hurt. But you're free because you don't know the risks. It's like someone who's never had their heart broken. They fall in love harder. How did you manage to keep that even though you've been through disappointments, things that hadn't worked in your life. What was it, um, Michael Jordan, uh, who said, like, I missed so many thousands of shots, um, but nobody ne necessarily remembers the misses. It's Babe Ruth, who I believe said, your next strikeout only brings you closer to your next home run. I don't try to focus on my failures. The only true failure is in not getting up. The only true failure is in not trying, Hodo, I was thinking about it the other day um, after I failed at something recently and I was like, I didn't fail, I fell. And as long oh. as I get up, I win. I love that. You're the, you're the child of immigrants. By the way, um, I have to let you know that when I was in third grade, I went to school in Ibadan, Nigeria for a year. My dad was a professor there. Yeah, we really? went to school. Yes, we have <laughs> such fond memories. It was just a year as the child of immigrants. I, and I'm a child of, of immigrants, too. I feel like there's something different that's in us. What did your parents give to you that led you to the man who you are today well when you travel the world and you see other parts of the world your mind and the aperture of your understanding is just so opened what did my parents give me a certain resiliency i just learned a different type of resilience i learned a different type of understanding of how blessed we are in america you don't really understand the american dream until you realize the nightmare is somewhere else and i've just lived other countries nightmares and so i i, I understand the difference in a dream and you've lived the american dream too boy <laughs> did you feel like this feels like my mountaintop you know i didn't the nfl was truly amazing it was amazing but unless you are in the top five percentile, the NFL, it too is scary. The reason I didn't feel like it was my mountaintop, I knew the NFL was a means to an end. Hold on, I like answering questions in story form. I vividly remember fearing I was going to be released every day I was in the NFL. The NFL, you have 53 people on a roster. Essentially, you have 53 employees. I was probably the 47th to the 53rd person on the roster as far as importance. Every Tuesday of an NFL week is when you get paid. So if you are on the roster on Tuesday, you know you are going to receive a check that week. So that means by Monday night, you likely will be released if you are going to be released. I was cut in the NFL five times before the age of 25. Imagine being hired 
at a job out of college, then being transferred across the country from that job, then being fired by your employer who transferred you and then being rehired and fired and rehired and fired and rehired and fired five times all by the age of 25. So the NFL to me was, it was so taxing. It was so anxiety uh, heavy. The NFL was not a highlight of my life. Oh, wow. Why did you stay in it as long as you did? In the NFL, if you play for four years, you're vested pension and you have annuity. And so the NFL was practical. I was like, okay, play four years. You have all the benefits. As soon as I hit four years, I was like, it is time to get out of here. So it was an easy decision. Simple. Not at all. Not easy. Why? Because the NFL, it cripples every one of your abilities besides playing sports. That's what nobody tells you. Imagine you graduate with a degree, which, by the way, is already hard if you're trying to make it to the NFL because playing college sports is a full time job. But imagine graduating with a degree, then whatever degree you graduate with, you have to put on ice for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10 years. So all of that knowledge which you have acquired is now gone to waste because you have been sitting here trying to play in the NFL. So transitioning is near impossible because it's all you've ever known. Every August, think about this, for 20 consecutive years, really 17, from when I was eight years old until I was 25 years old, every August I was wearing a football helmet. Then you wake up one August day and you're not putting a helmet on. It's, it's depressing, it's saddening. You go into dark places. You talked about how you stayed in the NFL for four years so you could get vested, you could get this. You, to me, if I'm listening to you and not knowing anything about you, seem like a very logical guy. I love that your book is called Illogical because it really, there is something beyond a pro-con list in life. What kept you kind of jumping in the deep end, even if you knew the odds were against you? Our greatest accomplishments in life, our greatest accomplishments in life come on the other side of our logic. So what is keeping me from my destiny? And that's really the way in which I operate. The the scariest phrase that can ever be uttered is that's the way we've always done things or that's the way I've always done things. And I just understand that our greatest accomplishments, my greatest accomplishment, your greatest accomplishment, I guarantee it'll come on the other side of my logic. So how can I be more illogical? This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens wherever you are nbc news streaming free now today is now a podcast available every morning listen wherever you get your podcasts for breaking news in our changing world download the nbc news app well i love that you which you just dovetailed nicely into your uncomfortable conversations with a black man i mean this is something that you felt a burning desire to do. People told you it was not a good idea. They said no. People close to yes, me. Yes, you're but this is this is yes. Imagine you're an athlete and you ask your coach what you should do and your coach says don't do something. Imagine you are a child and you ask your parent what you should do and your parent says don't do something. But I had a calling and what I realized Hoda is my calling wasn't a conference call. 
Uh, my calling was my calling and only I got that calling. Nobody else heard what I heard and it wasn't audible. It was within my own soul, my own spirit, if you will. How did you know that this was not something to ignore? I knew it was not something to ignore because I didn't have the luxury of ignoring it. What lives were going to be lost because of my lack of speech? And I think we all eventually have to ask ourselves that question. And it might not be a literal loss of life like a death, but what dream won't be fulfilled because I'm too afraid to act, because I'm so bound by logic? It might be my own dream. It might be a community that I might change. It might be a family that I might impact. It might be a neighborhood. It might be a city. It might be a religious gathering, but like, who am I costing because of my lack of courage? So many people ask me, Hoda, Emmanuel, how do you find your calling? Mm -hmm. And after pausing and thinking, I said, your calling will call you, just pick mm -hmm. up. So many people are searching left and right. I don't know what my calling is in life. I don't know what my purpose is in life. I don't know what I'm meant to do. Yo, your calling will call you and it probably already has. You're just not picking up. My calling literally called me. Matthew McConaughey, he called me from a no caller ID number after my first episode of Uncomfortable Conversations got 25 million views. I picked up, Acho, McConaughey speaking. I wanna have a conversation. I was like, what? Ma Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> um, he's like, yeah, I wanna have a conversation. I was like, Okay, well, we'll record episode two in four days. True story. I did not want to do another episode of Uncomfortable Conversations because of how big the first one was. McConaughey says, let's record it tomorrow. After McConaughey calls me, I get another call from a no caller ID number. Uh, caller ID number. Hi, Emmanuel. Oprah Winfrey speaking. Uh, Oprah? Like, <laughs> Oprah, Oprah? <laughs> Emmanuel, what is your intention? She asked me. Which, yeah, um, what did you say? That's good. I, I said, Oprah, my intention is to change the world, and I truly believe I can. All of that to say to those listening, your calling will call you. You just have to make that a logical decision to pick up. My calling was a literal no caller ID calls, but other people's calling will just be that internal yearning and that internal desire to do something that just seems a little crazy. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You'll get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> love you too. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You'll get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You'll get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. I love you too. <laughs> you know, they say that when you find your calling, you it's like you're riding a wave. Your whole life you swim upstream and all of a sudden you find the thing that you're supposed to be doing, and suddenly you feel like all of the forces of the universe are taking you in the way you're supposed to be going. You're on this ride. Do you feel like that's what's happening, or are you swimming up? 
Man, what's interesting, when you say riding a wave, I think there's inher- an inherent sense of ease that seems like yeah. it comes with that. I do believe your calling is what you're made for and your career is what you're paid for. Uncomfortable conversations is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Uh, so I can't say that I'm riding a wave yeah. because it's just so incredibly difficult. But your calling is just what you're made to do. Mm. Um, but sometimes it is a detour. And uncomfortable conversations was a detour. It was not my destination. A logical was my destination. Mm-hmm. Um, living a life and encouraging people to live their best life. That was my destination. I got my master's degree in sports psychology. So talking about, hey, let's all achieve the dreams we so desperately desire. That was my destination. Hoda, I just had to take a quick detour um, for the, for the <laughs> and- betterment of those around me. I was reading a book and they were talking about how that in this big field there was one wildflower growing and that everything on God's earth knows exactly what it is supposed to do without being told or thought out. That wildflower wasn't meant to be famous or popular or make lots of money. That wildflower is meant to bloom in the middle of that field, face the sun and make us all feel good. That was its purpose. And they said how people were the only thing in God's earth who don't really or have, to, have to sort of figure it out or spend our lives trying to be more like this one. I'm gonna yeah. be like Oprah, I wanna be like Denzel. Yeah. I wanna take a page from that. How is it that you were able to find, because it sounds like you have your voice, how did you find it and how do you think people can find it? Because everyone wants to look like that one, dress like that one, be like that one. It's in realizing that you have to be yourself because everybody else is already taken. Mm. And what I've realized is just, I have to be the best version of me. And the what you said is so wonderful about the wildflower. I think the problem we all collectively have as humans is we all have this innate desire to want to be like somebody else instead of simply being the best version of ourselves. Mm. And that is when I talk about like, it's just conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom says we should all do X, we should all do Y, we should all do Z, we should all go to high school, then we should all go to college, then we should all get a job, then we should all get married, then we should all have kids, and we should all live in a house behind a white picket fence. And the problem is, conventional wisdom is limiting all of us, in my greatest opinion. Conventional wisdom is limiting us from the life that we all deserve to be living. And I just finally said, wait a second, why am I going to live inside of someone else's box? Why am I going to let insignificant people have such significance in my life? Clearly faith is front and center with you. It comes out in almost every single answer that you are giving me. Sometimes it's obvious and sometimes it's subtle, but it's always there. Um, how has your faith played in, uh, in this journey of yours? My faith has driven me in this journey. And what I believe is we all have faith. The question is, when you sit down in a chair, you have faith that that chair is going to hold you up. Mm -hmm. So we are all, to some degree, people of faith. My faith drives me because, one, I understand what I've put on this earth to do, and it's just to touch lives, it's to to share the good news, it's to to talk about Jesus when I can. Um, But more than that, or not more than that, but in alongside with that, faith can be illogical. (laughs) Like... (laughs) Like, that's what people don't understand. Like, whether it is, think about this for a second. Noah was commissioned by God to build a boat and put every animal on it because there was going to be a flood. Hoda, can you imagine how many people saw Noah building every day saying, bro, what the heck are you doing? (laughs) Like, you are a fool until he looks out of the window and he puts his head up into the sky and then he get he feels it between his brows smack dab it's the first drop of rain mm. and the first drop of rain tells him that the flood is coming and i have a chapter actually titled the first drop of rain because when you've been illogical when i've been illogical that first drop of rain is going to hit. And when that first drop of rain hits you, that is when you know the flood is coming. So what was my first drop of rain? That call from Matthew McConaughey. Mm. The call from Matthew McConaughey, I hadn't yet written a book. I hadn't yet heard from Oprah. I hadn't yet been a bestseller. I hadn't yet won an Emmy. I hadn't yet done anything besides a video. But when McConaughey called, that was my first drop of rain, and that was the signal that the flood is coming. So when you make that a logical decision, whether it's building a boat, whether it's uh, sitting in front of a camera, whether it's starting a business, as soon as you get that first drop of rain, 
you know the flood is coming. And my faith literally moves me in life because it, it is mm. testaments like that. Wow, that is absolutely beautiful. And I know you, your book, Illogical, you say that's your calling, like that's what you're meant to do. You're meant to help, you're meant to heal, you're meant to encourage and cheerlead. I mean, that's so in your DNA. But there are a bunch of people, many people, and we've all been there ourselves too, if we're not there right now, it's you're lost. Like things aren't working for me, you know, and they're trying to figure out how to get up, how to pull up. Um, I know you've, you've got your faith and you've also got your sports psychology degree. You've got a lot going for you, but how, how do you speak to someone like that? Well, the first thing I would do is just encourage them that it's okay to not be okay. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay to be down for a little bit. The reason a mountain has peaks is because it has valleys. Mm -hmm. If there were no valleys, then everything would just seem like flat and level ground. Mm -hmm. So the valley is actually what dictates the peak. Um, I would also say that your time is coming but you mm -hmm. too have to make your time come. They say luck is when preparation meets opportunity. You can't win the lotto unless you buy a ticket. Mm -hmm. So you can sit there and hope and pray all you want to win the lotto, but you can't win the lottery unless you buy a ticket. So are mm -hmm. you buying tickets? I could hope and pray all I want and wish to change the world, but it was sitting down in front of the camera that led to uncomfortable conversations. It took action. This is what it looks and feels. The storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Now, everyone who I've ever interviewed um, loves the high moments in life, but that's not obviously where they learn anything. They learn things on their on their deepest valleys. What was your deepest valley? My deepest valley. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, remember, I was in Philadelphia. I was drafted to the Cleveland Browns in 2012. In 2013, the Philadelphia Eagles they traded for me. I was now in Philadelphia, but remember, I told y'all I was cut five times by that organization. One of the final times I got cut, and what people don't realize about the National Football League, when you get cut, they instantly remove your access from the building. You can no longer go into the building for anything, from a Gatorade shake to a workout to anything. I lived in Philadelphia. I lived very close to the Rocky Steps, but I still wanted to continue playing. So true story, after I got cut, I believe it was the second to last time, I would have to go to an abandoned field to work out. I showed up one day and the field is covered in nothing but pigeons. I didn't have bags. In, in football, you need a bags about five feet long and one foot high to just do different drills over. You might need to hop over the bag. You might need to sprint in front of a bag, then backpedal behind another one. Just do different uh, drills. I didn't have bags, so I had to steal street cones, construction orange street cones. So now imagine, I used to be this NFL player on Monday, 
But on Tuesday, I'm in an abandoned field, shooing pigeons off of the field, stealing construction cones, laying these construction cones on this field that has, was once overrun by pigeons, and I'm working out by myself, knowing that 20 minutes across town, all of my teammates and my best friends are there. Those were the lowest moments of my life. Man, I kept it up until I got another call, and the Eagles called me back, and they signed me again. But then I broke my thumb, uh, and after I broke my thumb, I'm having surgery, and I knew, I knew one of two things. If they had to put pins in my thumb, the Eagles were going to release me because if they put pins in my thumb, I could not play because pins protrude from the skin. So you can't put a bandage on it and play with it. If they put screws in my thumb, I could still play because with screws, you could put a club on your hand and still play. So immediately after my surgery operation, I wake up and I look at the doctor and all I ask him is, pins or screws because if I if he says pins the Eagles were going to release me for the final time if he says screws then I am still going to be employed I wake up still partially sedated and I just say pins or screws and he says pins um, I start weeping I go to the Eagles facility the general manager meets me at the front door and he says hey Emmanuel coach wants to see you bring your playbook that means you're getting released with my left hand, I now have to pack up my locker for the final time. I have a huge trash bag with tears down my eyes and my hand casted. And for the final time, I left the Philadelphia Eagles facility. It, funny enough, and interestingly enough, for those interested in that story, I lead the book, Illogical. The chapter starts yeah. with pins and screws. Um, pins and so the and very screws. first, the very I first like, chapter is pins and I screws. I feel like God was busy trying to tell you all along that it was time to say goodbye it to football, but you go. just wouldn't li You weren't listening. Remember you said you got to listen? You were like this, not yet. I need pins or screws. I need oh, to get down to the end. My, I need my was, five times. It was terrible. I but, was like but truly, does, truly terrible. But that does, Emmanuel, bring you to that thing, which, again, I keep going back to, which is how do you know if God's trying to tell you to work harder which is what you were doing all those five times with the, or how do you know if he's trying to tell you pivot time yeah. to pivot now? How do you know when it's time? I think when you have exhausted your emotional, your financial uh, and your spiritual bandwidth, and it's like, you know what, unless this works and if this is not blessed, I am going to move on. You know, just back to your book for a minute, illogical. Um, what do you hope that people, I know there's a lot of great life lessons in there, and I don't even know where to begin with them, quite frankly, because every time I turned a page, I was like, highlighter, highlighter. But there, it's got really good original ideas. But give me a couple that you think that people would like to take away. Along your illogical journey, so many people are going to tell you what you can't do instead of what you can do. Mm -hmm. And you are going to need to block out that noise. So do not ever forget your earmuffs so on your destiny towards being the best version of yourself and living the life of your dreams you're going to have a might be crazy moment we already discussed that first drop of rain moment when you are being illogical there's going to come a point in time when you have and you experience that first drop of rain which tells you your your your, your success is coming true story in sixth grade, I was at my friend's house and we were eating burgers. His older brother walked in and he threw something at the table. My dear friend ran from the table and started hiding behind a chair. I was like, what in God's name is going on? I looked at what his older brother threw at the table and it was simply a pack ketchup packet. I cracked it open after checking up my friend and I started eating my fries with some ketchup. At that point in time, I learned a valuable lesson that day, Hoda. Don't be afraid of other people's fears. Ooh, don't be that's afraid good. Of other fears. And so many of us in life are afraid of other people's fears. Well, well, I'm not going to start a business because my friend was afraid to. Yeah, I'm not going to get in a relationship because my homegirl got cheated on. I'm not going to get married because my, 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 my dad and my mom have never had. I've never seen a successful relationship. I can't leave this city. Nobody in my family has never ever left Austin, Texas. Why would I leave? I refuse to fly in an airplane because so and so is afraid of flying on an air. We're so afraid of other people's fears, not even our own. It's the craziest thing. That We're not even afraid brilliant. of our own fears. The book is called Illogical. It's by Emmanuel Acho. He's got great conversations. You can find him everywhere. You're making your mark. Look <laughs> at you. You're blazing your trail. Get out of your way. Thank you, my friend. <laughs>
Emmanuel, thank you. It was, a, it was wonderful talking to you. I enjoyed every second. Likewise. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking yeah. who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. If you think you know Kim Kardashian from that reality show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians, I'm just here to say you don't know nothing yet about Kim. Kim Kardashian, she's a brand, a multi-billion dollar brand with nearly 300 million followers on social media. She is the co-founder of a perfume collection, a makeup line, and so much more. But the biggest seller for Kim Kardashian is herself. People cannot get enough of this woman, of her family, her lifestyle, her choices. And while, yes, she is in the midst of a hectic work schedule, and she's also in the middle of a divorce from Kanye West, the father of her four kids, she's calmer than she seemed in a decade. She is in a new relationship with comedian and Saturday Night Live cast member Pete Davidson. She just launched another campaign for her shapewear line, Skims, and her famous family, well, they're about to embark on a new chapter of the reality show, The Kardashians. This time it's on Hulu. So what is Kim Kardashian making space for these days? Well, law school aside, she is making space for herself. Kim, it's so great to see you. I'm so happy that you have time to sit with me today. I've got a, a podcast called Making Space. And I weirdly feel like you're in a moment in your life where everything is everything is slowing down. Everything seems more peaceful and simpler. And I'm not sure if I'm reading into it, but I'm getting this total vibe about your life today, that there's a more of a calm, uh, a more calm going on. Am I right? There definitely is a lot of calm. I'd say when you have four kids, they'll never really fully be calm like ever. And I think when people say, oh, you're so much calmer now, or you seem like at peace now, I was definitely at peace and, and loving not being calm before. I don't think that there's like the two are pit against each other or that one is better than the other. I think at the phase in my life that I was at for the last decade, I've loved and it made me who I am today and I've grown and evolved, but it was super spontaneous and so much going on and so amazing. Um, I think I just like prefer now to, I work, you know, really hard and long hours and in school. And um, I think that what I choose to do with my off time now is just probably a little bit more simpler things. And so I feel more of a sense of inner calmness, but it doesn't but my life definitely isn't calm. I think people around me would be like, do you ever take a minute, you know? Um, so yes, there, there is a calmness for sure, but I loved every phase that I've been in in my life. Not too long ago, I ended a eight year relationship and it was not simple. Did you know for a long time that it wasn't the right fit? Were you just continuing or was it something that kind of came on? No, I think that, you know, in life, it's especially, you know, I've been divorced before and it's extremely difficult. I would say getting a divorce with children is a whole other level of pain and hard times that I just didn't even know existed. Um, but I really wanted to make a decision and it wasn't a quick decision. It wasn't, you know, it was something I think just over time, spending a lot of time apart and realizing, especially during the whole like quarantine time and having to spend a lot of time together after spending so much time apart, you just realize what really makes you happy. And, um, you know, I think some people might try to 
think maybe it's a selfish selfish decision because I do have four kids and I do want to be mindful of everyone's feelings involved. But I think like for once I was like, I want to really choose my happiness over anything and my peace of mind. And I think I like something just stuck out to me. Uh, my mom used to always like cry to me when I was in these, you know, bad relationships and you know, college and years ago. And she used to say, all I want for my kids and all I want for you is peace of mind. And when I like woke up and realized that I didn't have that, that's all I was looking for. And so I think that no matter what, it doesn't mean that, you know, everyone didn't try and it doesn't mean that I don't wish that it, you know, had turned out differently and, and there's nothing more than you'd want for everyone to be happy. But I think it also showed a lot of personal strength for me because I was really a people pleaser and I wanted everyone else to be happy that I finally was like, why am I measuring and trying to make other people happy over myself? And that takes a lot of strength to do, even if you know that it'll make your kids upset as well for a time period. I think you know, one day they're gonna grow up and be out of the house and it's just gonna be me and I'm gonna have to sit there with my happiness. And um, I saw, you know, my mom stay in a relationship too long when she wasn't as happy. And, and I just never wanted to, once I knew for sure in my heart and soul, I just wanted, I, I realized everyone's gonna heal quicker if I just make the move instead of not being my authentic self and not finding my inner peace. Well, there's a great Alicia Keys song I just heard with Brandy Carlisle, and it's called I Have a Voice. And it gives me chills when I hear it because when you're a pleaser, a people pleaser, your voice gets squished down. Sometimes it's so silent you can't even hear it. You don't even whisper to yourself anymore. You're just like, you know what? I'm just going to plod along and go along my merry way. But um, do you kind of believe that when you are peaceful, your kids will be too. Like it's almost like they feel your Absolutely. total vibe. Absolutely, I think when you're happy, your kids are happy. And even if it's hard and they don't understand at the time, I mean, I went through it and I understood it eventually with my parents. And I just think there's also, that's is a part of life. And these are also growing lessons and learning lessons for my kids too. And so I think that they will ultimately be better people when they're faced with hard times and faced with real life situations. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Uh, yeah, I love you too. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful okay. life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. How do you trust, this is something for everybody who's been in a relationship that didn't work, and then you see something that might work, but then you think, I'm not sure, I don't know. You get gun shy, you get afraid, I don't want to rot, you know, you just get afraid. But it seems to me that you followed some instinct in you, your soul or your spirit or something that said, yes, this is something to try with Pete. Yeah, I think that, you know, 
sometimes things happen when you just least expect it. Yeah. It was like the last thing that I was really planning on. Um, and so when it did happen, we were kind of like, oh my God, I wasn't like planning on this and this isn't even what I was thinking of. And like, it just makes it that much sweeter and so much more fun when you just, sometimes you just can't plan everything out and you can't, you have to be open to it and you have to like, you know, I definitely took my time. I took like, you know, 10 months or something before I dated or talk to anyone and I just wanted that time to really figure out and go through the motions. Am I making the right decision? How do I feel about this? Like you'll never know until you're put in situations. Um, and so once I went through all of the motions, I finally was like, okay guys, I am so ready to meet someone. And I randomly did. And I think you just, like Chloe asked me this question once. She was like, how do you know to trust a person? Like, how do you know to trust? And I was like, I've never thought about that. I've always been really trusting and I've never really had a guard up, but sometimes you just know. And sometimes you just like know when to trust. And so I just, I kind of go with it and I feel like everything has happened that could possibly happen that is heartbreaking, you know, in all of our lives. I've seen it with my sisters and my mom and just like, we all know someone that's been through a really hard time in relationships and everyone's been okay and everyone comes out okay. So you just have to like let yourself go and open yourself up to receive something and just be a good person and you'll get that back and no matter what, everyone's going to be okay. That's kind of like my outlook on everything with life. It is. It is. Do you trust yourself again to get married again? I want to live in the moment. I definitely want to, you know, I do love a relationship. That's the kind of like girl that I am. I don't really want to be, you know, dating around and stuff like that. But I do live in the moment. And I do think that I am holding, you know, a little bit more close to my heart on certain aspects of my relationship with Pete. And it feels good just to know that like, we have this connection and we have our little bubble of a relationship world that we live in that like not a lot of people know about. Mm. I, I think it's cool, even the little things we do know, you go, up, you go out for pizza, you're like, oh, everything's just cool and regular and not so, not such a we big deal. We were driving in the car yesterday and I just like looked at him and I was like, thank you. And he's like, what? And I was like, for running errands with me. Like, this is so much fun just to like go to a doctor's appointment or go to the dentist and just like run errands. Like I'm having so much fun. <laughs> it's so, it's like back to the beginning, back to before everything, yeah. right? I mean, and, and again, like it's not to say that any amazing big experience I had was mm -hmm. not so much fun as well and so worth it. It's just like where I'm at in life, I I feel like we worked so hard and we just want to enjoy, you know, different things like and, and I'm just so content. That's a beautiful word, by the way. OK, if you had a day that was just for you, Kim, you woke up, your kids were all being taken care of. Pete was busy. Where's this day? You open your eyes. It's a beautiful sunrise. You have one day for Kim, just for Kim. How would you and no work? How would you fill that day? Oh, my gosh, I would. I would work out because I love to work out. Um, yes. I would yeah. hopefully be waking up on the beach somewhere, really beautiful, mm. um, and just lay in bed all day and watch TV and movies and eat in bed. <laughs> I'm like such a homebody. I love to stay home. I love that you eat in bed. Uh, okay, some people are totally nope. against I that. I have a dust buster by my bed, in my, in my <laughs> side table drawer. I hate crumbs in the bed, so I definitely will put down a, a, a towel. I have trays. I have the most comfortable trays, and I just eat on the trays, and my dust buster is always on deck. <laughs> okay, snack of choice in oh bed? Oh, my God. Well, I'm eating extremely clean now. I love to just eat my dinners and stuff, oh. but, I mean, my favorite snacks okay, ever, yeah. like Cheetos and mm -hmm. cookies yeah. and... Stuff Triscuits like. and like so many random little things. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, 
wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Uh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> Do you feel, I feel like your life is full. Are there things that you feel like you are missing? Any puzzle pieces that aren't quite there yet? If you say, if I just, I'm just working toward that. I feel like you have so many irons in the fire that it's hard to quantify, but is there, is there something that you feel like needs to snap into place? Yeah, I really got to like get it together with law school. It's really hard. Yeah. I got to like, I got to finish. I have like, you know, almost two years left. Mm -hmm. And um, I have th I study three hours a day every day, and it is really hard. And I just can't wait. I keep on saying like, okay, I can't even entertain this business thing or this that I can't put another thing on my plate until school is done. I need to finish school, and once that happens, I will be a different human being. Do you kind of feel that sometimes you're underestimated when you walk into a room, Kim? Absolutely. And I've always been the underdog. Always. And that's okay with me. Like I'm, if anything, I like for someone to really be un like unpleasantly surprised and mm -hmm. maybe expect less and be blown away when maybe I give them more than they thought that I would ever give them, you know, but that's always mm -hmm. just been what people have perceived. And I don't know if that's mm -hmm. why I've worked so hard to try to figure it out and to try to show people. I mean, you know, your life changes and what you care about mm -hmm. can all change and grow and evolve. And so I really don't mind being the underdog and being thought differently and proving myself because I think that's what always has like kept that fire under me. Mm -hmm. Even if I didn't understand it at the time or couldn't understand certain people's decisions, I, um, I like applaud people's growth and where they're at. And um, yeah, I really just don't mind being that person and that underdog. I mean, people. can you just line out, just give me one snapshot of a day because I don't think I, I know you and I know how hard you work. There's not a harder a person who works harder. Line out your day for me. You wake up and go. I wake up at 5.40, I go to the gym from 6 to 7, 7.05, get the kids up, get them all ready for school, all four of them, help brush their teeth, get their uniforms on, eat breakfast, get them out the door, drive them to school, come back, start glam um, or study. Mm -hmm. It's like I have that few hour study mm -hmm. time or glam and or it's vice mm -hmm. versa. Then I film, and then I either go to a Skims campaign or a Skims fabric meeting, and then um, I'm, you know, relaunching my beauty brand soon. So it's like formulas and products and packaging and you know meetings all day, and then um, pick the kids up from school. Or if I'm in the middle of a shoot or something and I can't, I meet them after school. Always have dinner mm -hmm. with the kids, and then at nighttime either do my reading for studying for school or um, 
just do all my like skims content and organize I'm big on organizing and making sure everything's in place and then I go to bed around I put all the kids to bed and then I'm finally to bed around 10 30 myself oh my and then the day that's starts a day. All that's over a again. day Kim started the shapewear brand skims in 2019 filling a gap in the market with underwear shapewear and loungewear for people of all shapes and sizes and skin tones today the company is worth billions. Did you ever imagine that Skims would be a $3.2 billion company? I did I mean, not. I had hopes, obviously. I had such high hopes because I just felt like anytime there's something missing in the marketplace that you're always trying to find a solution for, other people are trying to find that same solution. Mm -hmm. So when I realized that, you know, in shapewear, there just was not size inclusivity and color tone inclusivity, I just knew that even just like where the seams were and everything that I was mm -hmm. changing on shapewear myself and wanting to perfect, I found that creating my own line was just gonna be my best bet. And I love every minute of it. I mean, I come up with mm -hmm. every campaign, every style, every fabric, I'm at every campaign. Like, it's just, e even doing the one with the the, my favorite icons, you know, I wasn't supposed to be mm -hmm. in that campaign. I just went to go see how they were doing and bring a beignet truck for them as a little <laughs> treat. And they were like, oh, no, no, you're getting in this campaign. You're getting in. And I was like, oh, my God, what? I, I wasn't prepared, <laughs> and I didn't get a spray tan, and I didn't, you know, and they were like, who cares? Get in it. You're in, and you did. And I did, and it was so much fun, and I'll have that memory forever. But I just have so many fun ideas that it's like my baby. You know, anytime I work on something now, it has to be like, I'm so obsessed, it's my baby, I can't, you know, wait to just show people what we have coming, and it's so much fun. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Well, keeping up with the Kardashians, we all saw, we watched as you bid that farewell. And sometimes when something's done, it's done. You just lock the box and say, that was a good ride. See you later, alligator. But something happened. This thing got another life. Uh, it's on Hulu. So what was it that made you decide, maybe we're not done yet? Um, in all honesty, a bidding war yeah. from streaming services came in. And we just were like, OK, how can we? We worked so hard for so many years. And like it was, you know. So it's the best lesson, but then it was just a really good opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. And we thought, you know what, let's take a year off. Let's not film for a year and let's let life happen. And we did. Mm -hmm. And then we all knew that we were going to miss it. Like we just were like, it yeah. was a bittersweet thing where we just felt like our time mm -hmm. on the network was up and our time just together like that was up. And then just coming together again was so much fun. The first day of filming was so weird. We were just, Why? we couldn't believe that we were filming again. And, and just like the way that we film is a little bit different. I think the viewer would love to just see, or hopefully they'll love it, just how documentary style it is and just how individual mm. it is. And you see mm -hmm. each sister and family member really on their own and kind of separate. And then we kind of all come together. 
where the last show was like all together all the time. Mm -hmm. So I think just knowing that it was going to be a little bit different and that's such a scary thing, like to start over and to, you know, because Keeping Up was so iconic. We're so close mm -hmm. to the producers, you know. We loved everyone and it was like, how do we start over? Is Are we making such a big mistake? Should we have just left it there? But I think after seeing the edits and, and seeing how it's shot and we're so excited and I'm just so excited for the viewer to see it. Well, I have to talk about just you and your sisters for one second because I remember it was years ago, but Kathy Lee and I went because Kendall was in a fashion show. Uh, she was walking the catwalk and when we got there, all of you guys were there. There were no cameras, there was nothing. You guys were screaming like it was the first time you'd seen Kendall on the catwalk. Oh, I know. And I said in that minute, that's why the show's successful because they love each other. Camera lights on, camera lights off. They're supporting and they're screaming to her like, like they had never seen her do it before. And I was cracking up and Kathy Lee's like, that's how they are, of course. But that's the magic, isn't it? Like that's the thing that makes Kathy people lean in. Kathy used to say that all the time. She used to say yeah. like, you guys, when we were kids, like, like super yeah. young, she would be like, I, I was a teenager and she would, she would say like, you guys are insane. Like what, where's the camera? Like. <laughs> Reality TV was just starting out, and she was like, you guys just have to have your own show. This is insane. Yeah, um, she said it, yeah. But I think that we're the same, you know, <laughs> cameras on, like you said, cameras off. I mean, there's not mm -hmm. one of my friends from high school that can say I'm any different now than I was back in high school. Mm -hmm. And I think we've just always maintained that. And I feel so lucky that we've had each other as a family to come up together. I mean, to think about it, we mm -hmm. all got our first check together. We all bought our first car together. We all bought, you know, got our first place. Like we had each other. We all ran into mm -hmm. our first celebrity that we were freaking out over. Like we had every same experience yeah. together as a family. So it's like just different than one of us moving out here from, you know, a different state and calling the other sister saying, oh my God, guess who I just met? Or, oh my God, guess what I just got? Like. We just, we kind of were able to share every experience together, which I think is pretty cool mm -hmm. and has kept us super grounded. But yeah, we support each other no matter what. We fight just like every family. I mean, I think that when we started filming, we couldn't have even imagined half the stuff that was gonna happen and go on mm -hmm. in our lives yeah. filming. I mean, we thought, how are we gonna get to a season two? We have nothing to film mm -hmm. about, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I just feel lucky that we're starting a, a new journey. Um, on Hulu and, and I hope that the fans like it just as much as they liked keeping up. I feel like we're rushing 100 miles an hour and I feel like, you know, they talk about how the, the top layer of the ocean is very, very tumultuous, but if you go down deep, it's calm and it's peaceful. And up on the top layer, they say it's like it's the things you gotta do. I gotta, I gotta pick up the kids, I gotta go to work, I gotta get to the meeting, I gotta check on the skims. But if you go deeper, it's calm and peaceful. What, what do you hope to make space for in this coming year in your life? I just hope to make as much space for my kids, to be honest. Mm. I try to spend as, so much time with them. I actually hope to make space for myself, too, just to have, mm. you know, a little vacay without the kids, maybe, or, yeah. you know, just I think that's super important is to always make space for yourself, but, but to make mm -hmm. space for your kids when they really need you and just make sure that you're there to do homework and all the little things add up to, to the big things. So I just, mm -hmm. um, I do make space for that and I just wanna continue to do that. Yeah, my favorite parenting hack when I'm asking my kids something is, the only thing I say to them is, tell me more. That's it, my only line to them and then all of a sudden out comes the entire day. Yeah. When I start That's asking them specifics, that they don't, they don't, they're like, I don't know, nothing. Tell me more, and they go, let me think of some. Oh, guess what happened, Mom? And they tell me some beautiful story. Yeah, oh, I love that. I'm gonna use that, yeah. I'm gonna steal that it's from a, you. It's a good one. Kim, I love you. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Oh my gosh, love you. Thank you for having All right. me. You got it, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.
Here we go. Good. Showtime. I was sitting here thinking uh, before you sat down, I was like, my goodness, this man, I mean, you've been playing in venues all over the world since you were 12, 13 years old. I was like, from Star Search to this. Yeah. I mean, when you think of that part of your journey, does it make this extra special? I mean, it does, because I'm kind of collecting from all of those experiences to now bring me to Las Vegas where I can do things my way. And, you know, just really celebrate being a showman. You know, a little bit of acting because of the theatrical nature of it, mm -hmm. the classic songs that have been made number one by the fans who come here. Uh, there are impromptu moments where it becomes about me and the DJ and I'm kind of out in, in the audience. And there's impromptu things that literally happen in this huge production of a show because I have a live band. Uh, but, you know, there's dancing, there's characters, there's singing along, there's great energy. You can't, you know, have a career of 30 some odd years and, you know, not celebrate all of the hits. The hardest problem is selecting them. I was just about to say, because people come and they have their favorite albums, they have their favorite songs. And we're talking decades of music. How do you do that? Do you give them little snippets of songs? Do you try to get all the big ones in? I have what's called um, the donut. The donut is the moment inside of the show that's like a treat. So if there is a song that, you know, somebody whispered to me during meet and greet, or either okay. I was walking around and, and her, you know what? We really want to hear this song. If I didn't put that song in the show, then I actually perform it with my band or I have my DJ throw it on and we just sing the song. This show is really my, my take, like my theatrical take on a bit of an immersive kind of journey of how these songs have taken me places or either we've shared yeah. these songs in our real you know, experiences in life. But, you know, it is theatrical. There are, there are moments that are kind of like, you know, they take you to a club in Atlanta, take you to somewhat of a Parisian club where there's, you know, characters in that club and each person plays a role and then the energy goes up and it becomes super sexy time and then we're kind of on demon time and then we kind of move to a place where it's just fun and free. I mean, you could take your show anywhere, you could go on the road, but what is it about Vegas that you said, you know what, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do a residency? Opportunity. You know, if I think of all of the people who have come here and the fact that they use this place to celebrate their entire history mm -hmm. and their creativity, this room acoustically is amazing, the sound is amazing. I get a chance to put on a show and not have to travel all around the country, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of inconvenience the family that I have now because I got kids that are going mm -hmm. to school, babies that are learning how to swim, mm -hmm. and I want to spend that time uh, still, you know, nurturing my career and, and, and enjoying that, but being able to still be there and be the dad that I want to be. Your favorite moment of the show, this show. Mm. Do you have a favorite moment? Mm. Doing it. <laughs> the favorite moment of the show is actually doing the entire thing. Like there's this anticipation that th this, in this entire panel right here ri rises uh, at the, the beginning of the show. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like a giddy like little kid. Like I go back to like my childhood and me having these visions of like performances and dances. You know, our kids look in the mirror and they see something else or they're yeah. using their imagination. Yeah. For me, I go back to that kid <laughs> and I'm like, man, I'm just so excited. And then the door comes up and there they are and I'm gonna put on a show to remember. Second um, most incredible moment of the night is when I'm out there okay. with my DJ. I told you about the donut, mm -hmm. right? That moment when I'm just playing those records, it's no production, it's literally, literally just the hit record or the moments. Sometimes it's a B-side. I'm like, oh, I just didn't even know that they remembered this of song. Of course they remember, yeah. yeah. I mean, but hey, you know, yeah. it's really uh, exciting to know that people have been with me all this time. Cause I'm just creating. I'm just, again, being a vessel. And when I hear it, when I see people sing the words, when I, I see them emotional, when I, I, I watch them go through these, these phases, like, they don't realize they're looking at me, but I'm literally watching their expression and where they made this connection. Oh, I remember the first time I sang this song and like with their friends laughing, singing this song because they've been together throughout the years. I see all that. And That's it just good. gives me the energy. It's like ultimate joy to be able to offer somebody else that type of joy. This is a lot. And I know this didn't happen overnight. Yeah. How long did it take to put this whole thing together? Man. Uh, it took a lifetime. I mean, the music that I built, 
or the creativity that um, I'm borrowing from, as I've said. And you'll see moments that are choreographic for my fans. They're like, oh, they remember certain moments from videos mm -hmm. or they remember certain wardrobe moments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the relationship to create the wardrobe for this show has been a dialogue throughout the years. I worked with Oswald Boateng and I worked mm -hmm. with Micah Mary, uh, Jerry Lorenzo of uh, Fear of God. And, and we created, you know, a wardrobe that would tell a story as well. Man, the physical aspect of it, it took, I say, to gather all of it musically, probably about two, three months. Wow. You know, I worked with OTBA, uh, who did an amazing job. Uh, Simon Hammerstein, uh, Akamon Jones, uh, Rio Henson, Henderson, sorry. And, so it's a whole. Yeah, it's a whole. And Amy, Amy Allen, all of these incredible people who choreographically helped me tell this story. You know, rather they were actually there with me. Because here's another thing about my crew everybody here that's working has either worked with me or for me at some point, mm. when I say choreographically, or either we dreamed and talked about this thing that would happen here. Mm. So to have it all come to fruition over the lifetime that it took to make the songs, or either the two, three months that we you know, went through all of the choreography and all of the lighting cues and all of the songs and trying to figure out how to make them perfectly work together for this two hour incredible experience, I, only, I didn't do it alone. I'm gonna take you backstage actually and show okay. you some of the wardrobe and some of the other things that, you know, that we do behind the scenes. So here's the thing. Yep. I totally underestimated yep. the magic behind the scenes or how many people it takes to put on a show. Really and truly. Yep. You would think I would know, but there are a lot of people behind I'm the really scenes. I'm Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. I mean, for real. Yeah, this is it, yeah. Yeah, and I'm the Wiz. Really too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, you get a chance to see how it works behind the scenes. You know so let's, we're gonna take you behind the scenes. So what will we find? This is like just. Just chill space. Okay, you now, need chill space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So you got the ladies over here. They're now getting ready for the show. Okay. <clears throat> Hair and makeup in here. Hi, ladies. <laughs> Dancers, performers, everybody's in here. Glam, all the things. And I try to keep a vibe going, as you know, this yeah. is kind of blue and red. Oh, so this you, this is your doing. Yeah, I can't, I, yo, when I'm backstage, I can't lose, like, the vibe. I have to keep the sense. energy. Yeah. And I tell you, it's an immersive experience. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So even for you. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, like, health and wellness. It's like the wellness room mm. where we have um, acupuncturists and also two massage therapists that are working back here. This is wow. the Nirvana room. This is where they work on all the magic, like, Arturo, who was the greatest, yeah, the Nirvana room. Yeah, I'm like, what's that? I want to see. <laughs> Arturo and Christina. The Nirvana room. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. What are you guys doing? Uh, Some of everything. Some pieces, some pieces for our I see rope, fur, <laughs> fabric, <laughs> all the things. Yeah, so what are they doing here? They're working on wardrobe for the show. Just, you know, that's always something that needs a nip and a tuck or either sure. to be fixed or either adjusted or gusseted. Okay. Because we're dancing, performing in real time, and there's sometimes, you know, wardrobe changes, sure. ideas, you know, things that kind of just elevate the show. Yeah. But they do all of the wardrobe fixes and also to creation. Yeah. Where the magic happens. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> there you go. We realize that y'all are like an important piece of the machine. I would, I would The most important yeah, piece. Yeah, absolutely. Of the so, are we ready? last but not least, the band room. Hi, band room. Hey, how's everybody? Hey, Wait, this might be my favorite room. Hey, and I'm not just saying that. It's that's like, that's no, no, I, have I said that yet? Nope. See? Oh, <laughs> it's just like chill vibes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what y'all do before the show. Well, it's nice to meet you. Spice water. <laughs> Stuff. I don't think I can go to just a plain old concert anymore. No. Like after this, the, you know what I mean? You raise the bar. I'm trying to up the ante. So you guys kind of take up the whole space? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I love it. It's yeah. like a family reunion. Yeah. This is good. Thank you. Yeah, for me, you know this what? I'm going to show y'all one thing that I don't normally show anybody, right? <laughs> so normally my physical therapy room, just see. so you understand. So okay. this kind of is dubbing for two spaces, right? <laughs> this is kind of like my health and wellness space. Okay. I got like a cold dip, literally, that I have to go into, you know, just to kind of keep my myself from inflammation. Wait, like an ice bath? Yeah, it's an ice bath. Is it literally like a, ice? You want to go feel it? Yes. You don't believe me? Wait, Freezing for real, cold. For real. Yeah. I mean, like I'm an a, athlete. I'm a full. I'm a but full I mean, look like how you perform. Let me see. Oh heck no. Oh no. <laughs> With the what, ducky. what the heck? <laughs> 
Seriously? Yeah. Oh, no. For, like, how long? Uh, it all depends on how bad it is, you know? <laughs> does it really help? Yeah, it does. I found different methods of therapy to really help my body stay in tune. You know, it's like, how am I able to do all the stuff that I, I do? I wonder, quite frankly. A lot of massage. Yeah. You know, a little therapy here, ice therapy, cryotherapy when I'm outside, and I got an infrared sauna right here to sit oh, wow. in. I wondered about that. I mean, the dancing, the energy that it takes. Well, we're moving like athletes. Yeah. You know, we have, you know, similar injuries. It might be a twist of an ankle or, you know, or something that's just out of place yeah. or either a muscle that spasms or something like that if you're not right. having enough water. Remember, we're in the desert, so everybody's encouraged to drink a lot of water. Yeah. We're out there sweating. I think this is important to see because I think people just think y'all just get out there and just like. Oh, we make it look easy. Yeah, huh? you do. You make it look easy. No, but this is good. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Um, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> you get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Um, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free. Now. I remember when you were on the Today Show not too long ago, yeah. and they said, Chanel, you're going to skate with Usher. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I knocked in your dressing room door. I'm like, Usher, yeah. can you roller skate? And you're like, no, it's terrible, I'm right? not that good. <laughs> and then you go out there and you're like, next level. Yeah. Did you grow up skating? I, well, I grew up skating in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and then in Atlanta, I think everybody uh, skates there as well. But it's, it's something that we do in the South a lot. But you go to places where you can dance, sing, listen to music, skate. So bringing that culture now forward with flippers as we launched mm -hmm. at Rockefeller Center in New York City, um, I got a chance to bring a little bit of that in here. I built an entire skating rink inside this um, space, right? And I feel like skating yeah. is coming back, but I feel like when people are here, whether they're from Wichita, whether they're from LA, like once they're here, it's just like they have a moment to just put everything on hold and have a good time. Two trains of thought for me. Okay. One, something that is athletic, that kind of challenges you, and there's music. No different than working out in the gym. You listen to music, you pump iron, you run on a treadmill, you're on a bike. So you get a little bit of a sweat and you work out you know, some of the issues that you may be, sure. you know, just holding on to. The other train of thought is, we're all kids again. Yeah. You probably more than likely found skating on quads when you were a kid mm -hmm. or rollerblades, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It just brings this energy that is all about joy, all about fun, all about celebration with your friends, you meet people, you have a good time listening to new music, get motivated by somebody's style, get better at it if you choose to. Yeah. You know. But um, for me, I wanted to offer something that um, is just about joy and fun in this time in my life. I've been doing this for a long time. And I think we all need something that just brings joy back to us. We've been locked away because of COVID or either restrictions in certain you know, state cities. So just to go back and have fun for two seconds, but be in a space where you can, you know, display some kind of energy and, and, and feel good about yourself you know you sweat a little bit <laughs> but you feel good when you when you look out there and you see people just having fun that to me is, is what i love about skating and, and this freedom that i'm having right now to just be creative and just go back to how i did things when i first started when i decided 25 years ago that i would do things my way i said i would have fun so i'm just having fun and that's keeping me young that's keeping me that's keeping my energy right, 
I'm actually even able to celebrate with my kids. Too. I'm able mm -hmm. to literally skate with my kids too and That's just share that same joy that I had when I was their age. That's a dream. Yeah, it is. I was just reading, I, didn't, I can't believe it. it's been, it's been 25 years. We're almost at the 25th anniversary yeah. of My Way. Yeah. She likes it my way. Does it feel like 25 years? No, it doesn't. I was literally 19 years old when I did that album. JD was 25 years wow. old when we, uh, we did that album. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a monumental moment for me. Um, we're going to do some really incredible things uh, this year with it. We're relaunching the album. And I did a few uh, remixes uh, with, a, with an incredible producer by the name of Ryan Carr. Uh, we remixed Nice and Slow, You Make okay. Me Wanna, and it's going to really be cool. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I have a question for you. Okay. So when you're on this stage, it seems like these days, I have been trying to put my phone down to be present. And, you know, I'll capture it for a second, but then I want to see you with my eyes. I want to be where I am. Do you ask people to put their phones down? Like, how do you do that as an artist these days? Typically, in a Broadway or either Las Vegas show, you don't bring out your phone. But at a concert, you do. Mm -hmm. I welcome people to bring their phones in. Uh, and the work for me is to captivate them so much to the point that they don't want to pick them up. <laughs> and if they do, they're literally like, oh, I don't want to miss something. There's so much going on. Mm. Like... It's like by the time you realize, wait a minute, I'm completely immersed in an experience mm. where it's not about what's being captured here. It's what's being remembered in the moment. And that's really what this was. I, I, I think that we all need to be more present. Mm. I think we all need to, you know, just maybe put the phone down a moment and, and be present with each other and enjoy this incredible gift that we have to be vessels. You know, my creativity is for the purpose of helping people through hard times. You know, being able to sing songs that bring you joy, you know, allow you to have sadness and get over things or get through things. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to be present in that moment. We should be present at a concert. I Absolutely. think hopefully I have under promise and over delivered with this residency. Cheers to that. So on that yeah. note, some artists come and go and they have hits. You've been able to crank out hit after hit, new ventures. You keep evolving. Yep. How do you do it? Pay attention to the wins and remember the losses. Mm. Yeah. Pay attention to where you are because when I say pay attention to the win, that's more than likely the moment when you begin to become relaxed and you're like, mm. oh, I got it. No. Remember the loss and remember the moment when it was hard. Mm. How do I continue to do it? Man, I collaborate with some incredible writers, some incredible producers, incredible creatives, and we make things that are real. We try to be as present as we can, talk about things that are real, and celebrate life, good 
and bad at times, whether you choose to call it good or bad. Because, you know, when you're talking about a song about heartbreak, you're crying, you're mm -hmm. hurt, but you're learning something. You're living through something. You're learning the process of life. Sometimes you go through something to get to something. And then we celebrate. Mm -hmm. Cool. But music has always assisted us in that way. For every great moment, there's a song to go with it. Mm -hmm. For every sad moment, there's a song that goes with it. So I just, I be that vessel. God made me who I am. He gave me this gift. And... I'm going to continue to do it the way that I want to do it. Um, I love it. I love it's working. It. I told you I do this series, this mom series, where I interview the moms of people that we admire. Yep. So I talked with your mom, and she talked about the passion that you've always had, but she also talked about the work and how much work you put in since you were a little boy. What don't we see as far as the work, even from all those years back to even now? What don't you see? I mean, the, the hours. You know, when you look at this idea of the the big show, the lights, this thing that we created in this time, the work that it took to get here, it didn't always look like this. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that you didn't get a chance to see. You didn't see, or maybe you haven't chosen to, to look at the fact that it all starts the same. It starts with ambition. It starts mm -hmm. with passion. And that's really what has led me. You don't get a chance to see the time that is sacrificed uh, away from family. I'm pretty sure there's other kids out there like that, that, you know, are trying to figure out what am I, where am I, what do I like, what do I spend my time focusing on? The more hours you put in focusing on that, the more likely you are to be success. So I always say um, be committed and um, it ain't going to always be pretty. Have you found balance? Have you, are you able to be present with family life? You've got four beautiful kids yeah. and you've got this life. How do you juggle it all? Well, being able to be here in Las Vegas has given me that opportunity to find more balance. As I said, you know, I'm traveling around the world, I'm setting up a stage, I'm tearing it down. So I save a lot of time, money, and there's nothing more important than time. Mm -hmm. Money is what it is, right? Time, you can't get back. So being able to have that time to go with Sire and Sovereign and, and teach them how to swim or either be in the pool with them and help them understand swimming those are genuine moments to so pick them up in the morning and laugh, help them, you know, help Navid figure out what he's going to do, you know, with his, uh, you know, his career. He really wants to be an actor. So I'm I was like, going to ask right. you about that. Or did you see a creative bug in any of them? I think he loves theatrical things, um, but and he's 13. So he's trying to really figure out exactly which way he wants to go. It's always been like a show kid. He's loved, you know theatrical plays and loves all types of music. But now seeing him act in theatrical plays, I'm like, man, he really does have what it takes. He's just got to really get focused without any pressure, I'm not trying to push him more than he should, but I want to be a supportive dad and encourage him. Maybe I know a thing or two about it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then Usher, Usher being able to be here at a um, at basketball camp, being able to see him athletically, you know, really you know, find his thing, you know, find what he wants to do, the position he's going to play, rather he chooses to do that or go in a different direction. But I know that time means a lot to them and it means even more to me to be able to have it. So Las Vegas gave me that opportunity to do this, be creative, but still have my time as a dad. My dad wasn't there for me. Uh, so I'm happy that I'm able to kind of fix all those things that I didn't necessarily have with them. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels the latest like. Film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. 
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. People loved you on The Voice. Do you like that part of the job, being a mentor to young people or maybe the generation of folks who are coming up behind you? So many people look to you because you've had such a long career. I felt like I was born to do it. Mm. I feel like literally uh, I'm an example. Uh, and I feel like I'm setting an example. Uh, I ain't perfect. None of us are. But what I can use is my experience to be able to help people find their passion and help them stay connected to it. I am the artist that I am. I am the man that I am because of the mentors that I had. Okay. So, I mean, everybody from Virgil Roberts, who was an attorney, and also to, I look at him like a father. You know, mentors and big brothers like Tyler Perry, like Russell Simmons, like L.A. Reid, like Sean Puffy Combs, mm -hmm. like, you know, Jermaine Dupri, uh, like Harry Belafonte, all of these incredible people who are like handpicked family and people whom I, I have an incredible relationship with because I get honesty from them because they they listen we listen to each other we support each other they actually support me and help me you know understand certain things Terry Lewis I was just talking to him earlier this morning and we just he didn't have to take 30 to 40 minutes to just sit on a call with me and talk but to know that at this point I still have that kind of connection means more than anything. And I feel like you've been reaching out for years. I remember, you know, even Bieber. Like, didn't you help him gazillions of years ago? You saw him, his talent, was it on YouTube? Or what yeah, was it? well, his discovery uh, through me and uh, my partner, Scooter Braun. Yeah, that was the beginning of his career. He's obviously done exceedingly well. Yeah, when you see Bieber now, what, do you, what crosses your mind? It's just love, mm. you know? You know, with all of the noise of this world, to know that you have somebody in something that's still real is important. And I promised uh, him from the beginning that I would try my best to be that. I love that. Yeah. Finally, who do you listen to? Who's on your playlist? Who's on my playlist? Mm -hmm. Man, I wish I could tell you. I've been so immersed in this show. Really? Um, yeah, I mean, but every night there's this uh, party that we do at On The Record, which is right outside, is another immersive experience in addition to this show. Uh, I do a party that kind of that kind of takes you to a different world. My whole thing is always about immersive theatrical experiences, okay. if you haven't noticed. I love it. <laughs> I keep saying it over and over again. Well, it's um, forward thinking, too. It's not just going, you see a stage, and you're not part of it. I feel like we're part of the you're experience. In it. See, I'm, I'm, here. I'm here. There you go. There you go. But yeah, we listen to old school music. Like in that party, it's like R&B rules. That right there is the energy that I, I always wanted for Las Vegas. I wanted to do or offer something that I didn't think existed here in Las Vegas. This is an opportunity, a grounds for me to incubate ideas and be creative and really take like ownership of this place. You know, I look at, you know, what I see. I wasn't a part of it. I only think I was born when the Rat Pack were doing what they were doing. Mm. Right. And now having that opportunity to do something or things similar to what they were doing in that time where they were really celebrating. Those guys came together and they celebrate it. So I'm out here with my guys, we partying, having a good time, doing shows, laughing, doing comedy. Me and T.I. out here, Kevin Hart, you know, Dave Chappelle, uh, uh, Jamie Foxx. Usher, this is epic. Yeah, like, do you hear yourself? I mean, it's yeah. just a dream. This is a whole new Vegas. I'm, I'm like a different type of ambassador, you know what I'm saying? And giving you authenticity and, and pieces here, glimpses of what has happened or what you get from Atlanta, but you're getting it in Las Vegas, running it out here, making sure we keep it steady and fun and authentic, you know what I'm saying? What do you want your fans to walk away with when they see this show, this oh, residency? Man. Get ready. Get ready because there's more to come. You know, even though you're looking at this, this is really a celebration of the past. But now, we're here in the present and the future. If you enjoyed this, Way to get a load of what's happening next. Yeah. Cheers to that. Yeah. Thank you. I'm okay. home, baby. The Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker.
If you ask most people, they'd say reaching the NFL would be a career pinnacle, the top of the mountain. But for my guest today, the NFL was just the beginning. As a linebacker who played on three pro teams retiring in 2015, Emmanuel Acho was just getting started. Turns out Emmanuel's calling was off the field in missionary work and more recently, social justice. Just under two years ago, Emmanuel decided to create and host an online video series of conversations about racism called Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. It's since been viewed more than 80 million times and went on to win an Emmy in 2021. And now Emmanuel is setting out to help others find meaning in their lives. Emmanuel, what a pleasure it is to have you on Making Space. I feel like you are our perfect guest because you are somebody who follows uh, a part of you that isn't always your intellect. It isn't always your pro-con list. You go with something that is beyond that. Since you were a kid, let's go back. Let's go back. Since you were a kid and you were making decisions on where to go, what to do, what led you? I've never been asked that question before. I am led by my convictions. And so when, when I say conviction, what do, we, what do you mean? I'm led by some innate inner yearning to move, to act, to go. Um, that's truly what led me. It's my convictions. And so if I ever feel convicted to move in a certain way, a certain direction, that is the manner in which I go. Sometimes it makes no practical sense at all. Um, but I just feel like you have to move by convictions. I mean, look, when you're a kid, you don't know what the risks are. There are no risks. You jump off the swing, you jump off, you'll realize later that that hurt. But you're free because you don't know the risks. It's like someone who's never had their heart broken. They fall in love harder. How did you manage to keep that even though you've been through disappointments, things that hadn't worked in your life. What was it, um, Michael Jordan, uh, who said, like, I missed so many thousands of shots, um, but nobody ne necessarily remembers the misses. It's Babe Ruth, who I believe said, your next strikeout only brings you closer to your next home run. I don't try to focus on my failures. The only true failure is in not getting up. The only true failure is in not trying. Hold on, I was thinking about it the other day um, after I failed at something recently, and I was like, I didn't fail, I fell. And as long oh. as I get up, I win. I love that. You're the, you're the child of immigrants. By the way, um, I have to let you know that when I was in third grade, I went to school in Ibadan, Nigeria for a year. My dad was a professor there. Yeah, we really? went to school. Yes, we have <laughs> such fond memories. It was just a year as the child of immigrants. I, and I'm a child of, of immigrants, too. I feel like there's something different that's in us. What did your parents give to you that led you to the man who you are today well when you travel the world and you see other parts of the world your mind and the aperture of your understanding is just so opened what did my parents give me a certain resiliency i just learned a different type of resilience i learned a different type of understanding of how blessed we are in america you don't really understand the american dream until you realize the nightmare is somewhere else and i've just lived other countries nightmares and so i i, I understand the difference in a dream and you've lived the american dream too boy <laughs> did you feel like this feels like my mountaintop you know i didn't the nfl was truly amazing it was amazing but unless you are in the top five percentile, the NFL, it too is scary. The reason I didn't feel like it was my mountaintop, I knew the NFL was a means to an end. Hold on, I like answering questions in story form. I vividly remember fearing I was going to be released every day I was in the NFL. The NFL, you have 53 people on a roster. Essentially, you have 53 employees. I was probably the 47th to the 53rd person on the roster as far as importance. Every Tuesday of an NFL week is when you get paid. So if you are on the roster on Tuesday, you know you are going to receive a check that week. So that means by Monday night, you likely will be released if you are going to be released. I was cut in the NFL five times before the age of 25. Imagine being hired 
at a job out of college, then being transferred across the country from that job, then being fired by your employer who transferred you and then being rehired and fired and rehired and fired and rehired and fired five times all by the age of 25. So the NFL to me was, it was so taxing. It was so anxiety uh, heavy. The NFL was not a highlight of my life. Oh, wow. Why did you stay in it as long as you did? In the NFL, if you play for four years, you're vested pension and you have annuity. And so the NFL was practical. I was like, okay, play four years. You have all the benefits. As soon as I hit four years, I was like, it is time to get out of here. So it was an easy decision. Simple. Not at all. Not easy. Why? Because the NFL, it cripples every one of your abilities besides playing sports. That's what nobody tells you. Imagine you graduate with a degree, which, by the way, is already hard if you're trying to make it to the NFL because playing college sports is a full-time job. But imagine graduating with a degree. Then whatever degree you graduate with, you have to put on ice for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten years. So all of that knowledge which you have acquired is now gone to waste because you have been sitting here trying to play in the NFL. So transitioning is near impossible because it's all you've ever known. Every August, think about this, for 20 consecutive years, really 17, from when I was eight years old until I was 25 years old, every August I was wearing a football helmet. Then you wake up one August day and you're not putting a helmet on. It's, it's depressing. It's saddening. You go into dark places. You talked about how you stayed in the NFL for four years so you could get vested, you could get this. You, to me, if I'm listening to you and not knowing anything about you, seem like a very logical guy. I love that your book is called Illogical because it really, there is something beyond a pro-con list in life. What kept you kind of jumping in the deep end, even if you knew the odds were against you? Our greatest accomplishments in life, our greatest accomplishments in life come on the other side of our logic. So what is keeping me from my destiny? And that's really the way in which I operate. The, the scariest phrase that can ever be uttered is that's the way we've always done things, or that's the way I've always done things. And I just understand that our greatest accomplishments, my greatest accomplishment, your greatest accomplishment, I guarantee it'll come on the other side of my logic. So how can I be more illogical? Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels. The storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now. Oh, I love that, you, which you just dovetailed nicely into your uncomfortable conversations with a black man. I mean, this is something that you felt a burning desire to do. People told you it was not a good idea. They said no. People close to yes, me. Yes, you're. But this was, this is, yes. Imagine you are an athlete and you ask your coach what you should do, and your coach says don't do something. Imagine you are a child and you ask your parent what you should do, and your parent says don't do something. But I had a calling, and what I realized, Hoda, is my calling wasn't a conference call. Hmm. 
Um, my calling was my calling and only I got that calling. Nobody else heard what I heard and it wasn't audible. It was within my own soul, my own spirit, if you will. How did you know that this was not something to ignore? I knew it was not something to ignore because I didn't have the luxury of ignoring it. What lives were going to be lost because of my lack of speech? And I think we all eventually have to ask ourselves that question. And it might not be a literal loss of life like a death, but what dream won't be fulfilled because I'm too afraid to act, because I'm so bound by logic? It might be my own dream. It might be a community that I might change. It might be a family that I might impact. It might be a neighborhood. It might be a city. It might be a religious gathering. But like, who am I costing because mm -hmm. of my lack of courage. So many people ask me, Hoda Emanuel, how do you find your calling? Mm -hmm. And after pausing and thinking, I said, your calling will call you, just pick mm -hmm. up. So many people are searching left and right. I don't know what my calling is in life. I don't know what my purpose is in life. I don't know what I'm meant to do. Yo, your calling will call you and it probably already has. You're just not picking up. My calling literally called me. Matthew McConaughey, he called me from a no-caller ID number after my first episode of Uncomfortable Conversations got 25 million views. I picked up. Acho, McConaughey speaking. I want to have a conversation. I was like, what? Ma Ma Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> um, he's like, yeah, I want to have a conversation. I was like, Okay, well, we'll record episode two in four days. True story. I did not want to do another episode of Uncomfortable Conversations because of how big the first one was. McConaughey says, let's record it tomorrow. After McConaughey calls me, I get another call from a no caller number, uh, caller ID number. Hi, Emmanuel. Oprah Winfrey speaking. Uh, Oprah? Like, <laughs> Oprah, Oprah? <laughs> Emmanuel, what is your intention? She asked uh, me. Which, yeah, what did um, you say? That's good. I, I said, Oprah, my intention is to change the world, and I truly believe I can. All of that to say to those listening, your calling will call you. You just have to make that a logical decision to pick up. My calling was a literal no caller ID calls, but other people's calling will just be that internal yearning and that internal desire to do something that just seems a little crazy. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News. Streaming free now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You know, they say that when you find your calling, you, it's like you're riding a wave. Your whole life you swim upstream and all of a sudden you find the thing that you're supposed to be doing and suddenly you feel like all of the forces of the universe are taking you in the way you're supposed to be going. You're on this ride. Do you feel like that's what's happening or are you swimming up? 
Man, what's interesting, when you say riding a wave, I think there's inher- an inherent sense of ease that seems like yeah. it comes with that. I do believe your calling is what you're made for and your career is what you're paid for. Uncomfortable conversations is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Uh, so I can't say that I'm riding a wave yeah. because it's just so incredibly difficult. But your calling is just what you're made to do. Mm. Um, but sometimes it is a detour. And uncomfortable conversations was a detour. It was not my destination. A logical was my destination. Mm-hmm. Um, living a life and encouraging people to live their best life. That was my destination. I got my master's degree in sports psychology. So talking about, hey, let's all achieve the dreams we so desperately desire. That was my destination. Hoda, I just had to take a quick detour um, for the, for the <laughs> and- betterment of those around me. I was reading a book and they were talking about how that in this big field there was one wildflower growing and that everything on God's earth knows exactly what it is supposed to do without being told or thought out. That wildflower wasn't meant to be famous or popular or make lots of money. That wildflower is meant to bloom in the middle of that field, face the sun and make us all feel good. That was its purpose. And they said how people were the only thing in God's earth who don't really or have, to, have to sort of figure it out or spend our lives trying to be more like this one. I'm gonna yeah. be like Oprah, I wanna be like Denzel. Yeah. I wanna take a page from that. How is it that you were able to find, because it sounds like you have your voice, how did you find it and how do you think people can find it? Because everyone wants to look like that one, dress like that one, be like that one. It's in realizing that you have to be yourself because everybody else is already taken. Mm. And what I've realized is just, I have to be the best version of me. And the what you said is so wonderful about the wildflower. I think the problem we all collectively have as humans is we all have this innate desire to want to be like somebody else instead of simply being the best version of ourselves. Mm. And that is when I talk about like, it's just conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom says we should all do X, we should all do Y, we should all do Z, we should all go to high school, then we should all go to college, then we should all get a job, then we should all get married, then we should all have kids, and we should all live in a house behind a white picket fence. And the problem is, conventional wisdom is limiting all of us, in my greatest opinion. Conventional wisdom is limiting us from the life that we all deserve to be living. And I just finally said, wait a second, why am I going to live inside of someone else's box? Why am I going to let insignificant people have such significance in my life? Clearly faith is front and center with you. It comes out in almost every single answer that you are giving me. Sometimes it's obvious and sometimes it's subtle, but it's always there. Um, how has your faith played in, uh, in this journey of yours? My faith has driven me in this journey. And what I believe is we all have faith. The question is, when you sit down in a chair, you have faith that that chair is going to hold you up. Mm -hmm. So we are all, to some degree, people of faith. My faith drives me because, one, I understand what I've put on this earth to do, and it's just to touch lives, it's to to share the good news, it's to to talk about Jesus when I can. Um, But more than that, or not more than that, but in alongside with that, faith can be illogical. (laughs) Like... (laughs) Like, that's what people don't understand. Like, whether it is, think about this for a second. Noah was commissioned by God to build a boat and put every animal on it because there was going to be a flood. Hoda, can you imagine how many people saw Noah building every day saying, bro, what the heck are you doing? (laughs) Like, you are a fool until he looks out of the window and he puts his head up into the sky and then he get he feels it between his brows smack dab it's the first drop of rain mm. and the first drop of rain tells him that the flood is coming and i have a chapter actually titled the first drop of rain because when you've been illogical when i've been illogical that first drop of rain is going to hit. And when that first drop of rain hits you, that is when you know the flood is coming. So what was my first drop of rain? That call from Matthew McConaughey. Mm. The call from Matthew McConaughey, I hadn't yet written a book. I hadn't yet heard from Oprah. I hadn't yet been a bestseller. I hadn't yet won an Emmy. I hadn't yet done anything besides a video. But when McConaughey called, that was my first drop of rain, and that was the signal that the flood is coming. So when you make that a logical decision, whether it's building a boat, whether it's uh, sitting in front of a camera, whether it's starting a business, as soon as you get that first drop of rain, 
you know the flood is coming. And my faith literally moves me in life because it, it is mm. testaments like that. Wow, that is absolutely beautiful. And I know you your book, Illogical, you say that's your calling, like that's what you're meant to do. You're meant to help, you're meant to heal, you're meant to encourage and cheerlead. I mean, that's so in your DNA. But there are a bunch of people, many people, and we've all been there ourselves too, if we're not there right now, it's you're lost. Like things aren't working for me, you know, and they're trying to figure out how to get up, how to pull up. Um, I know you've, you've got your faith and you've also got your sports psychology degree. You've got a lot going for you, but how, how do you speak to someone like that? Well, the first thing I would do is just encourage them that it's okay to not be okay. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay to be down for a little bit. The reason a mountain has peaks is because it has valleys. Mm -hmm. If there were no valleys, then everything would just seem like flat and level ground. Mm -hmm. So the valley is actually what dictates the peak. Um, I would also say that your time is coming but you mm -hmm. too have to make your time come. They say luck is when preparation meets opportunity. You can't win the lotto unless you buy a ticket. Mm -hmm. So you can sit there and hope and pray all you want to win the lotto, but you can't win the lottery unless you buy a ticket. So are mm -hmm. you buying tickets? I could hope and pray all I want and wish to change the world, but it was sitting down in front of the camera that led to uncomfortable conversations. It took action. Begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now, everyone who I've ever interviewed um, loves the high moments in life, but that's not obviously where they learn anything. They learn things on their on their deepest valleys what was your deepest valley my deepest valley oh gosh okay um remember i was in philadelphia i was drafted to the cleveland browns in 2012 in 2013 the philadelphia eagles they traded for me i was now in philadelphia but remember i told y'all i was cut five times by that organization one of the final times i got cut and what people don't realize about the national football league when you get cut they instantly remove your access from the building. You can no longer go into the building for anything from a Gatorade shake to a workout to anything. I lived in Philadelphia. I lived very close to the Rocky Steps, but I still wanted to continue playing. So true story. After I got cut, I believe it was the second to last time, I would have to go to an abandoned field to work out. I showed up one day and the field is covered in nothing but pigeons. I didn't have bags. In, in football, you need a bags about five feet long and one foot high to just do different drills over. You might need to hop over the bag. You might need to sprint in front of a bag, then backpedal behind another one. Just do different uh, drills. I didn't have bags, so I had to steal street cones, construction orange street cones. So now imagine, I used to be this NFL player on Monday. 
But on Tuesday, I'm in an abandoned field, shooing pigeons off of the field, stealing construction cones, laying these construction cones on this field that has, was once overrun by pigeons, and I'm working out by myself, knowing that 20 minutes across town, all of my teammates and my best friends are there. Those were the lowest moments of my life. Man, I kept it up until I got another call, and the Eagles called me back, and they signed me again. But then I broke my thumb, uh, and after I broke my thumb, I'm having surgery, and I knew, I knew one of two things. If they had to put pins in my thumb, the Eagles were going to release me, because if they put pins in my thumb, I could not play, because pins protrude from the skin, so you can't put a bandage on it and play with it. If they put screws in my thumb, I could still play, because with screws, you could put a club on your hand and still play. So immediately after my surgery operation, I wake up, and I look at the doctor, and all I ask him is, pins or screws because if I if he says pins the Eagles were going to release me for the final time if he says screws then I am still going to be employed I wake up still partially sedated and I just say pins or screws and he says pins um, I start weeping I go to the Eagles facility the general manager meets me at the front door and he says hey Emmanuel coach wants to see you bring your playbook that means you're getting released with my left hand, I now have to pack up my locker for the final time. I have a huge trash bag with tears down my eyes and my hand casted. And for the final time, I left the Philadelphia Eagles facility. It, funny enough, and interestingly enough, for those interested in that story, I lead the book, Illogical. The chapter starts yeah. with pins and screws. Um, pins and so the and very screws. first... The very I first like, chapter is Pinder I screws. feel like God was busy trying to tell you all along that it was time to say goodbye to football, but you go. just wouldn't let li You weren't listening. Remember you said you got to listen? You were like this, not yet. I need pins or screws. I need oh, to get down to the end. My, I need my was, five times. It was terrible. It but, was like but truly, that does, truly terrible. But that does, Emmanuel, bring you to that thing, which, again, I keep going back to, which is how do you know if God's trying to tell you to work harder which is what you were doing all those five times with the, or how do you know if he's trying to tell you pivot time yeah. to pivot now? How do you know when it's time? I think when you have exhausted your emotional, your financial uh, and your spiritual bandwidth, and it's like, you know what, unless this works and if this is not blessed, I am going to move on. You know, just back to your book for a minute, illogical. Um, what do you hope that people, I know there's a lot of great life lessons in there, and I don't even know where to begin with them, quite frankly, because every time I turned a page, I was like, highlighter, highlighter. But there, it's got really good original ideas. But give me a couple that you think that people would like to take away. Along your illogical journey, so many people are going to tell you what you can't do instead of what you can do. Mm -hmm. And you are going to need to block out that noise. So do not ever forget your earmuffs so on your destiny towards being the best version of yourself and living the life of your dreams you're going to have a might be crazy moment we already discussed that first drop of rain moment when you are being illogical there's going to come a point in time when you have and you experience that first drop of rain which tells you your your your, your success is coming true story in sixth grade, I was at my friend's house and we were eating burgers. His older brother walked in and he threw something at the table. My dear friend ran from the table and started hiding behind a chair. I was like, what in God's name is going on? I looked at what his older brother threw at the table and it was simply a pack ketchup packet. I cracked it open after checking up my friend and I started eating my fries with some ketchup. At that point in time, I learned a valuable lesson that day, Hoda. Don't be afraid of other people's fears. Ooh, don't be that's afraid good. of other people's fears. And so many of us in life are afraid of other people's fears. Well, well, I'm not going to start a business because my friend was afraid to. Yeah, I'm not going to get in a relationship because my homegirl got cheated on. I'm not going to get married because my, 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 my dad and my mom have never had. I've never seen a successful relationship. I can't leave this city. Nobody in my family has never ever left Austin, Texas. Why would I leave? I refuse to fly in an airplane because so and so is afraid of flying on an air. We're so afraid of other people's fears, not even our own. It's the craziest thing. That We're not even afraid brilliant. of our own fears. The book is called Illogical. It's by Emmanuel Acho. He's got great conversations. You can find him everywhere. You're making your mark. Look <laughs> at you. You're blazing your trail. Get out of your way. Thank you, my friend. <laughs>
Emmanuel, thank you. It was, a, it was wonderful talking to you. I enjoyed every second. Likewise. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of asking. Man, yeah, Who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. If you think you know Kim Kardashian from that reality show, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, I'm just here to say you don't know nothing yet about Kim. Kim Kardashian, she's a brand, a multi-billion dollar brand with nearly 300 million followers on social media. She is the co-founder of a perfume collection, a makeup line, and so much more. But the biggest seller for Kim Kardashian is herself. People cannot get enough of this woman, of her family, her lifestyle, her choices. And while, yes, she is in the midst of a hectic work schedule, and she's also in the middle of a divorce from Kanye West, the father of her four kids, she's calmer than she seemed in a decade. She is in a new relationship with comedian and Saturday Night Live cast member Pete Davidson. She just launched another campaign for her shapewear line, Skims, and her famous family, well, they're about to embark on a new chapter of the reality show, The Kardashians. This time it's on Hulu. So what is Kim Kardashian making space for these days? Well, law school aside, she is making space for herself. Kim, it's so great to see you. I'm so happy that you have time to sit with me today. I've got a, a podcast called Making Space. And I weirdly feel like you're in a moment in your life where everything is everything is slowing down. Everything seems more peaceful and simpler. And I'm not sure if I'm reading into it, but I'm getting this total vibe about your life today, that there's a more of a calm, uh, a more calm going on. Am I right? There definitely is a lot of calm. I'd say when you have four kids, they'll never really fully be calm like ever. And I think when people say, oh, you're so much calmer now, or you seem like at peace now, I was definitely at peace and, and loving not being calm before. I don't think that there's like the two are pit against each other or that one is better than the other. I think at the phase in my life that I was at for the last decade, I've loved and it made me who I am today and I've grown and evolved, but it was super spontaneous and so much going on and so amazing. Um, I think I just like prefer now to, I work, you know, really hard and long hours and in school. And um, I think that what I choose to do with my off time now is just probably a little bit more simpler things. And so I feel more of a sense of inner calmness, but it doesn't but my life definitely isn't calm. I think people around me would be like, do you ever take a minute, you know? Um, so yes, there, there is a calmness for sure, but I loved every phase that I've been in in my life. Not too long ago, I ended a eight year relationship and it was not simple. Did you know for a long time that it wasn't the right fit? Were you just continuing or was it something that kind of came on? No, I think that, you know, in life, it's especially, you know, I've been divorced before and it's extremely difficult. I would say getting a divorce with children is a whole other level of pain and hard times that I just didn't even know existed. Um, but I really wanted to make a decision and it wasn't a quick decision. It wasn't, you know, it was something I think just over time, spending a lot of time apart and realizing, especially during the whole like quarantine time and having to spend a lot of time together after spending so much time apart, you just realize what really makes you happy. And, um, you know, I think some people might try to 
think maybe it's a selfish selfish decision because I do have four kids and I do want to be mindful of everyone's feelings involved. But I think like for once I was like, I want to really choose my happiness over anything and my peace of mind. And I think I like something just stuck out to me. Uh, my mom used to always like cry to me when I was in these, you know, bad relationships and you know, college and years ago. And she used to say, all I want for my kids and all I want for you is peace of mind. And when I like woke up and realized that I didn't have that, that's all I was looking for. And so I think that no matter what, it doesn't mean that, you know, everyone didn't try and it doesn't mean that I don't wish that it, you know, had turned out differently and, and there's nothing more than you'd want for everyone to be happy. But I think it also showed a lot of personal strength for me because I was really a people pleaser and I wanted everyone else to be happy that I finally was like, why am I measuring and trying to make other people happy over myself? And that takes a lot of strength to do, even if you know that it'll make your kids upset as well for a time period. I think you know, one day they're gonna grow up and be out of the house and it's just gonna be me and I'm gonna have to sit there with my happiness. And um, I saw, you know, my mom stay in a relationship too long when she wasn't as happy. And, and I just never wanted to, once I knew for sure in my heart and soul, I just wanted, I, I realized everyone's gonna heal quicker if I just make the move instead of not being my authentic self and not finding my inner peace. Well, there's a great Alicia Keys song I just heard with Brandy Carlisle, and it's called I Have a Voice. And it gives me chills when I hear it because when you're a pleaser, a people pleaser, your voice gets squished down. Sometimes it's so silent you can't even hear it. You don't even whisper to yourself anymore. You're just like, you know what? I'm just going to plod along and go along my merry way. But um, do you kind of believe that when you are peaceful, your kids will be too. Like it's almost like they feel your Absolutely. total vibe. Absolutely, I think when you're happy, your kids are happy. And even if it's hard and they don't understand at the time, I mean, I went through it and I understood it eventually with my parents. And I just think there's also, that's is a part of life. And these are also growing lessons and learning lessons for my kids too. And so I think that they will ultimately be better people when they're faced with hard times and faced with real life situations. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is what it looks and feels like. The storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. How do you trust, this is something for everybody who's been in a relationship that didn't work, and then you see something that might work? But then you think, I'm not sure. I don't know. You get gun shy. You get afraid. I don't want to rot. You know, you just get afraid. But it seems to me that you followed some instinct in you, your soul or your spirit or something that said, yes, this is something to try with Pete. Yeah, I think that, you know, 
sometimes things happen when you just least expect it. Yeah. It was like the last thing that I was really planning on. Um, and so when it did happen, we were kind of like, oh my God, I wasn't like planning on this and this isn't even what I was thinking of. And like, it just makes it that much sweeter and so much more fun when you just, sometimes you just can't plan everything out and you can't, you have to be open to it and you have to like, you know, I definitely took my time. I took like, you know, 10 months or something before I dated or talk to anyone and I just wanted that time to really figure out and go through the motions. Am I making the right decision? How do I feel about this? Like you'll never know until you're put in situations. Um, and so once I went through all of the motions, I finally was like, okay guys, I am so ready to meet someone and I randomly did. And I think you just, like Chloe asked me this question once. She was like, how do you know to trust a person? Like, how do you know to trust? And I was like, I've never thought about that. I've always been really trusting and I've never really had a guard up, but sometimes you just know. And sometimes you just like know when to trust. And so I just, I kind of go with it and I feel like everything has happened that could possibly happen that is heartbreaking, you know, in all of our lives. I've seen it with my sisters and my mom and just like, we all know someone that's been through a really hard time in relationships and everyone's been okay and everyone comes out okay. So you just have to like let yourself go and open yourself up to receive something and just be a good person and you'll get that back and no matter what, everyone's going to be okay. That's kind of like my outlook on everything with life. It is. It is. Do you trust yourself again to get married again? I want to live in the moment. I definitely want to, you know, I do love a relationship. That's the kind of like girl that I am. I don't really want to be, you know, dating around and stuff like that. But I do live in the moment. And I do think that I am holding, you know, a little bit more close to my heart on certain aspects of my relationship with Pete. And it feels good just to know that like, we have this connection and we have our little bubble of a relationship world that we live in that like not a lot of people know about. Mm. I, I think it's cool, even the little things we do know, you go, up, you go out for pizza, you're like, oh, everything's just cool and regular and not so, not such a we big deal. We were driving in the car yesterday and I just like looked at him and I was like, thank you. And he's like, what? And I was like, for running errands with me. Like, this is so much fun just to like go to a doctor's appointment or go to the dentist and just like run errands. Like I'm having so much fun. <laughs> it's so, it's like back to the beginning, back to before everything, yeah. right? I mean, and, and again, like it's not to say that any amazing big experience I had was mm -hmm. not so much fun as well and so worth it. It's just like where I'm at in life, I I feel like we worked so hard and we just want to enjoy, you know, different things like and, and I'm just so content. That's a beautiful word, by the way. OK, if you had a day that was just for you, Kim, you woke up, your kids were all being taken care of. Pete was busy. Where's this day? You open your eyes. It's a beautiful sunrise. You have one day for Kim, just for Kim. How would you and no work? How would you fill that day? Oh, my gosh, I would. I would work out because I love to work out. Um, yes. I would yeah. hopefully be waking up on the beach somewhere, really beautiful, mm. um, and just lay in bed all day and watch TV and movies and eat in bed. <laughs> I'm like such a homebody. I love to stay home. I love that you eat in bed. Uh, okay, some people are totally nope. against I that. I have a dust buster by my bed, in my, in my <laughs> side table drawer. I hate crumbs in the bed, so I definitely will put down a, a, a towel. I have trays. I have the most comfortable trays, and I just eat on the trays, and my dust buster is always on deck. <laughs> okay, snack of choice in oh bed? Oh, my God. Well, I'm eating extremely clean now. I love to just eat my dinners and stuff, oh. but, I mean, my favorite snacks okay, ever, yeah. like Cheetos and mm -hmm. cookies yeah. and... Stuff Triscuits like and like so many random little things. You'll get one beautiful life to live. 
Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Do you feel, I feel like your life is full. Are there things that you feel like you are missing? Any puzzle pieces that aren't quite there yet? If you say, if I just, I'm just working toward that. I feel like you have so many irons in the fire that it's hard to quantify, but is there, is there something that you feel like needs to snap into place? Yeah, I really got to like get it together with law school. It's really hard. Yeah. I got to like, I got to finish. I have like, you know, almost two years left. Mm -hmm. And um, I have th I study three hours a day every day, and it is really hard. And I just can't wait. I keep on saying like, okay, I can't even entertain this business thing or this that I can't put another thing on my plate until school is done. I need to finish school, and once that happens, I will be a different human being. Do you kind of feel that sometimes you're underestimated when you walk into a room, Kim? Absolutely. And I've always been the underdog. Always. And that's okay with me. Like I'm, if anything, I like for someone to really be un like unpleasantly surprised and mm -hmm. maybe expect less and be blown away when maybe I give them more than they thought that I would ever give them, you know, but that's always mm -hmm. just been what people have perceived. And I don't know if that's mm -hmm. why I've worked so hard to try to figure it out and to try to show people. I mean, you know, your life changes and what you care about mm -hmm. can all change and grow and evolve. And so I really don't mind being the underdog and being thought differently and proving myself because I think that's what always has like kept that fire under me. Mm -hmm. Even if I didn't understand it at the time or couldn't understand certain people's decisions, I, um, I like applaud people's growth and where they're at. And um, yeah, I really just don't mind being that person and that underdog. I mean, people. can you just line out, just give me one snapshot of a day because I don't think I, I know you and I know how hard you work. There's not a harder a person who works harder. Line out your day for me. You wake up and go. I wake up at 5.40, I go to the gym from 6 to 7, 7.05, get the kids up, get them all ready for school, all four of them, help brush their teeth, get their uniforms on, eat breakfast, get them out the door, drive them to school, come back, start glam um, or study. Mm -hmm. It's like I have that few hour study mm -hmm. time or glam and or it's vice mm -hmm. versa. Then I film, and then I either go to a Skims campaign or a Skims fabric meeting, and then um, I'm, you know, relaunching my beauty brand soon. So it's like formulas and products and packaging and you know meetings all day, and then um, pick the kids up from school. Or if I'm in the middle of a shoot or something and I can't, I meet them after school. Always have dinner mm -hmm. with the kids, and then at nighttime either do my reading for studying for school or um, 
just do all my like skims content and organize I'm big on organizing and making sure everything's in place and then I go to bed around I put all the kids to bed and then I'm finally to bed around 10 30 myself oh my and then the day that's starts a day. All that's over a again. day Kim started the shapewear brand skims in 2019 filling a gap in the market with underwear shapewear and loungewear for people of all shapes and sizes and skin tones today the company is worth billions. Did you ever imagine that Skims would be a $3.2 billion company? I did I mean, not. I had hopes, obviously. I had such high hopes because I just felt like anytime there's something missing in the marketplace that you're always trying to find a solution for, other people are trying to find that same solution. Mm -hmm. So when I realized that, you know, in shapewear, there just was not size inclusivity and color tone inclusivity, I just knew that even just like where the seams were and everything that I was mm -hmm. changing on shapewear myself and wanting to perfect, I found that creating my own line was just gonna be my best bet. And I love every minute of it. I mean, I come up with mm -hmm. every campaign, every style, every fabric, I'm at every campaign. Like, it's just, e even doing the one with the, the my favorite icons, you know, I wasn't supposed to be mm -hmm. in that campaign. I just went to go see how they were doing and bring a beignet truck for them as a little treat. <laughs> and they were like, oh, no, no, you're getting in this campaign. You're getting in. And I was like, oh, my God, what? I, I wasn't prepared, <laughs> and I didn't get a spray tan, and I didn't, you know, and they were like, who cares? Get in it. You're in, and you did. And I did, and it was so much fun, and I'll have that memory forever. But I just have so many fun ideas that it's like my baby. You know, anytime I work on something now, it has to be like, I'm so obsessed, it's my baby. I can't, you know wait to just show people what we have coming and it's so much fun this is what it looks and feels With the latest film, the bigger piece of the puzzle we comes. begin tonight with breaking news how much water ultimately will be forced inland whenever it happens wherever you are nbc news streaming free now nbc news streaming free now Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film, the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Well, keeping up with the Kardashians, we all saw, we watched as you bid that farewell. And sometimes when something's done, it's done. You just lock the box and say, that was a good ride. See you later, alligator. But something happened. This thing got another life. Uh, it's on Hulu. So what was it that made you decide, maybe we're not done yet? Um, in all honesty, a bidding war yeah. from streaming services came in. And we just were like, OK, how can we? We worked so hard for so many years. And like it was, you know. So it's the best lesson, but then it was just a really good opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. And we thought, you know what, let's take a year off. Let's not film for a year and let's let life happen. And we did. Mm -hmm. And then we all knew that we were going to miss it. Like we just were like, it yeah. was a bittersweet thing where we just felt like our time mm -hmm. on the network was up and our time just together like that was up. And then just coming together again was so much fun. The first day of filming was so weird. We were just, Why? we couldn't believe that we were filming again. And, and just like the way that we film is a little bit different. I think the viewer would love to just see, or hopefully they'll love it, just how documentary style it is and just how individual mm. it is. And you see mm -hmm. each sister and family member really on their own and kind of separate. And then we kind of all come together. 
where the last show was like all together all the time. Mm -hmm. So I think just knowing that it was going to be a little bit different and that's such a scary thing, like to start over and to, you know, because Keeping Up was so iconic. We're so close mm -hmm. to the producers, you know. We loved everyone and it was like, how do we start over? Is Are we making such a big mistake? Should we have just left it there? But I think after seeing the edits and, and seeing how it's shot and we're so excited and I'm just so excited for the viewer to see it. Well, I have to talk about just you and your sisters for one second, because I remember it was years ago, but Kathy Lee and I went because Kendall was in a fashion show. Uh, she was walking the catwalk. And when we got there, all of you guys were there. There were no cameras. There was nothing. You guys were screaming like it was the first time you'd seen Kendall on the catwalk. Oh, I know. And I said in that minute, that's why the show's successful because they love each other. Camera lights on, camera lights off. They're supporting and they're screaming to her like like they had never seen her do it before. And I was cracking up and Kathy Lee's like, that's how they are, of course. But that's the magic, isn't it? Like that's the thing that makes Kathy people lean in. Kathy used to say that all the time. She used to say yeah. like, you guys, when we were kids, like like super yeah. young, she would be like, I, I was a teenager and she would she would say like, you guys are insane. Like what? where's the camera? Like. <laughs> <laughs> reality TV was just starting out and she was like you guys just have to have your own show this is insane yeah um, she said it yeah but I think that we're the same you know <laughs> cameras on like you said cameras off I mean there's not mm -hmm. one of my friends from high school that can say I'm any different now than I was back in high school mm -hmm. and I think we've just always maintained that and I feel so lucky that we've had each other as a family to come up together. I mean, to think about it, we mm -hmm. all got our first check together. We all bought our first car together. We all bought, you know, got our first place. Like we had each other. We all ran into mm -hmm. our first celebrity that we were freaking out over. Like we had every same experience yeah. together as a family. So it's like just different than one of us moving out here from, you know, a different state and calling the other sister saying, oh my God, guess who I just met? Or, oh my God, guess what I just got? Like. We just, we kind of were able to share every experience together, which I think is pretty cool mm -hmm. and has kept us super grounded. But yeah, we support each other no matter what. We fight just like every family. I mean, I think that when we started filming, we couldn't have even imagined half the stuff that was gonna happen and go on mm -hmm. in our lives yeah. filming. I mean, we thought, how are we gonna get to a season two? We have nothing to film mm -hmm. about, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I just feel lucky that we're starting a new journey. Um, on Hulu and and I hope that the fans like it just as much as they liked keeping up. I feel like we're rushing a hundred miles an hour and I feel like you know they talk about how the the top layer of the ocean is very very tumultuous but if you go down deep it's calm and it's peaceful and up on the top layer they say it's like it's the things you gotta do I gotta I gotta pick up the kids I gotta go to work I gotta get to the meeting I gotta check on the skims but if you go deeper it's calm and peaceful what what do you hope to make space for in this coming year in your life? I just hope to make as much space for my kids, to be honest. Mm. I try to spend as, so much time with them. I actually hope to make space for myself, too, just to have, mm. you know, a little vacay without the kids, maybe, or, yeah. you know, just I think that's super important is to always make space for yourself, but, but to make mm -hmm. space for your kids when they really need you and just make sure that you're there to do homework and all the little things add up to, to the big things. So I just, mm -hmm. um, I do make space for that and I just want to continue to do that. Yeah, my favorite parenting hack when I'm asking my kids something is, the only thing I say to them is, tell me more. That's it, my only line to them and then all of a sudden out comes the entire day. Yeah. When I start That's asking them specifics, that they don't, they don't, they're like, I don't know, nothing. Tell me more, and they go, let me think of some. Oh, guess what happened, Mom? And they tell me some beautiful story. Yeah, oh, I love that. I'm gonna use that, yeah. I'm gonna steal that from you. It's a good one. Kim, I love you. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Oh my gosh, love you. Thank you for having right. me. You got it, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.
there and welcome to Start Today. I'm Stephanie Mansour, today's fitness contributor. Whether you're starting to exercise for the first time or striving to reach fitness goals, the new year offers the perfect chance to push yourself to new heights. And you've come to the right place for guidance and motivation. Start Today is today's wellness and fitness community where over 100,000 members share their health journeys. Last year, we gathered members of our Start Today community to walk through Universal Studios, and now we're taking it a step further. In this episode, we'll share healthy and delicious recipes, workouts that you can do at home, and some incredible transformations. Before I began helping people, I went on my own health journey to lose weight and gained an understanding of the importance of working out and eating well. In the Start Today group, I've gotten the chance to know incredible individuals who are on their own wellness journeys, sharing their progress to motivate others. Recently, I spoke with Karen Dallas, whose life has been transformed through thoughtful and committed exercise. Let's take a look. So I would love for us to share with everyone. Um, first of all, can you tell us like how you found the Start Today group? Sure. Um, a few years ago, I went through terrible trauma. I, I lost so many loved ones, including my husband, and so I was really in a dark place. So I spent a couple of years working on healing myself emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Uh, and then earlier this year, I thought, now's the time to tackle this uh, physical yeah. element of it, because I had gained so much weight during this time. And um, so I thought, I'm going to start researching uh, groups that I could be a part of. And before I even got started on the research, I received an email from the Today Show. And it said, join our June walking challenge. And I thought, hey, I can walk. Yeah. You know, I can do a walking challenge. So I signed up that day. Uh -huh. It was June 1st. It was June 1st when I got the email. Yep. And so I signed up that day and I got going and um, never looked back. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, all right, so and then can you tell everyone like where you were at then? Because I know, um, I remember like it was hard for you to, to walk like oh. without being in pain, right? Yeah, you know, I knew I could walk. I was, I was ready to go. I was all energized. I got about a block down the street and I thought, oh, Lord help me. I'm not gonna make it. So I had to stop and stretch my back out. My back was hurting so badly. And I thought, if my neighbors see me, they're probably going to call 911 because I was just a mess. I was a mess. And if this was so odd for me because I've always been so active, mm -hmm. you know, up until the last few years. And so it was rough. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, I, I went a block. I would stretch. I'd walk another block. I'd stretch. Yeah. And that went on for a couple of weeks. I thought, I'm not giving up. I yeah. am not giving up. I'm, I can do this. Yeah, what made and, you not give up? Like, what what made it like a, a wake up call instead of like you know a reason to keep yourself sidelined? Well, if I don't change, nothing's going to change. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can't. I don't want this to be my life. Yeah, I don't want to be in pain. I'm too young to be in this kind of shape. I want to have a good quality of life, a good retirement. I want to do fun things. By the end of June, no pain. I was walking the full 20 to 30 minutes a day. Okay. So you can do it. You just have to stick with it. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. And then give us kind of an overview of like June until now. Like give us, give us your successes. Well, in July, since I was feeling pretty good about myself at that point, that I could actually walk. Right. <laughs> I signed up for one of your uh, sessions, the weight loss group. Uh-huh. So that was the first time I actually joined uh, a community uh -huh. of like-minded people when we were in this to lose some weight. Yeah. And that was life-changing for me as well. Yeah. So um, I joined that as a 12-week program, mm -hmm. made it through the 12 weeks, didn't have enough apparently because I signed up a second time. Right, right. And, then, and now we're in it again and I, I'm just really making very positive changes. Yes. I love it. And we'll talk more about those programs in a minute too, because I want people to know, you know, it's it's like you've made so many changes. Like you've you've changed how you view food, you've changed like the emotional eating component of all of this. 
um, your mood, your your like energy around right. the exercise and the eating and the taking care of yourself, prioritizing yourself has has really transformed from where you were, you know, prior to six months ago. Um, so what can you tell everyone how much weight you've lost and like the different the difference in your energy levels and your outlook? I've lost about 20 pounds uh, mm -hmm. since June. Um, well, really since July, uh -huh. trying to get that walking implemented. I didn't start losing weight until I joined the weight loss group. Yeah. And so I've lost about 20 pounds since July. Uh -huh. uh, building a great foundation. I think the thing is to do something sustainable that you can manage for the rest of your life. Right. I don't want to lose 20 pounds to gain back 20 pounds. Right. You know, I want to maintain this. So I'm building a great foundation. I feel confident that I can continue and this is going to be a lifelong uh, habit for me. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. And what are three tips that you would give someone um, like they're just starting out or maybe they're like you and they, they were walking, you know, down the block and then already in pain. Like what, what tips would you give to them, if any? <laughs> Oh, I, I could write a book on tips, maybe okay. not, what not to do, but uh, a few things to do is uh, find your community. I think that's one of the most important. Find your uh, team, your cheerleading squad, uh, people that support you. My sister is my biggest cheerleader. Uh, my neighbors, my friends, our community. Yeah. Our community is, oh, I, I'm thankful every day. Yes. Them. They make my, my gratitude journal very oh. <laughs> um, one of the things you can get wisdom so much just from a t-shirt sometimes and I have this t-shirt that I wear that says no one succeeds alone oh and that I love is that. so true yeah so doubt you can't do this alone mm -hmm. you've got to have a team around you and you've got to have people supporting you so that's one tip I love uh, it I, I would say the second tip is something that I learned from you Perfection is not sustainable. Yes. Let's go for that passing grade. That's right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We're going for a C. We're just right. looking to pass. We do not get bonus points if we get a B or an A plus or extra credit on the A plus, you know. Yes. I was I always that. an A student, so that took me a minute, but when it clicked, it clicked. Yeah. And so I thought, okay, I can do this. I can do a C at least every day. Some days will be an A, some days will be a B, but we're going to yeah. shoot for that C. Yep. And then and some days might be an F, but it'll oh, balance well, out to yeah. a C. Yeah, we try not to talk about those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, some days are an F. <laughs> <gasps> some days you just sit around in your pajamas, okay? Right. And that's all right. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I'd probably say my third tip would be, you can do hard things. Mm. You know, don't sell yourself short. Mm. You can do this. Um, life is hard, you know, life sucks sometimes, but then it's great. Yeah. You know, life is also great. So you can do hard things. You can get through this. You can have a better quality of life. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're all here for you. We're mm -hmm. all here to support you. Yeah. Re reach out for help. Yep. Go back to tip one. Have your yeah. community. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> That's right. What a transformation. It was so great to chat with Karen and hear her story. Coming up, we'll be digging deep into meal prep with three easy recipes anyone can make. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is what it looks and feels like. The storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. 
Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back to Start Today. Part of feeling your best is fueling your body with fruits, vegetables, protein, fat, and yes, carbs. To help set us up for success in the kitchen, registered dietitian Vanessa Rosetto is here with three simple recipes to make meal prep easier. Hey, Vanessa. Hi, so nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Oh what gosh. are we making today? Thanks for having me. Okay, so we're making egg cups. Egg Ooh. cups are super yes. easy. They help you with batch cooking and uh -huh. meal prep. Everybody always wants things to be done quickly. Yes. And so today we're going to get it done. I love it. So many of our members ask for quick, you know, grab and go breakfast. Yep. So I love making egg muffins myself. So I'm totally. excited to get started. Yeah. And it's not just a breakfast. It's, it can be lunch and a dinner and a snack. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So we are going to start with our inclusions. Okay. Um, we're going to start with some spinach, good source mm -hmm. of fiber, Love it. vitamin K. It's going to help you. Um, <laughs> we have some cheddar cheese, good source of fat, and then onions. It's just going to give us a little bit of bite and kick. So okay. I like to mix those together, mix it up, and then okay. you're going to take a quarter cup and just like loosely pack into oh. the muffin tin. Now, can you use different types of cheese, like feta? I yes. love feta. Feta cheese is naturally low fat. It's uh -huh. also helpful for people who are lactose intolerant because it's made from sheep's milk. Okay. Uh, but you never have to go and buy low-fat feta because it's already low-fat. Okay. Which is amazing. That's a great tip. Yes. So okay, so what gonna, do we do next? So you're going to pack that in. Oh, That's I see. We be, put this in, in the bottom. Yes, you put that in oh. the bottom. Yes. It's just a better way to fill it properly right. so you don't over. I've always fill. been filling these wrong. And then it, and then it goes up, right? <laughs> yes, it does. And yeah. I wonder why it's like exploding over the top. Yeah. Okay. So I have eight <laughs> eggs here. I'm going to whisk these till they're pretty smooth. So then we're going to have some salt Every and less. pepper, All right? Backwards and milk, just so okay. we can like fluff that up. Okay, so, great. Can people use almond milk or you know other types of milk if they're lactose intolerant? You can. Okay. The only thing is that the almond milk, if you are picking one that's sweetened yeah. or vanilla, it's going to give it a different flavor. Right. So you're going to want to make sure that you pick one that is unsweetened and original flavor. Original flavor. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. you don't want to change that out. Okay. okay great. So we're just going to start. Pouring. Okay. Just like, so we want to make sure not to overfill. Yeah. So we might have to like go back and forth a little bit. That's another problem I've had making these. I fill everything up to the yeah. brim. And then it just like goes <laughs> really high. Yeah. And yeah. then you're kind of in a little bit of trouble. But that's okay. So if you had if you had two of these every day, you'd have enough for breakfast for six days, almost a whole week. Yeah. 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 And these microwave nicely after we bake them. And Thirty seconds. Them. Okay. It's like like very quick. This okay. Is like you will be very happy. Yes. With this. So now we're gonna put these in the oven at three twenty five for twenty to twenty five minutes, and we'll know that they're done when we you know feel them being firm. So okay. if we want to just like head over to the oven yeah. and put them in, we can get started. Great. These look so good. I know. I'm sometimes <laughs> impressed by myself. Yes. Um, so, you know, you let these cool for about okay. five to seven minutes. We don't want to burn the roof of our mouths. Okay. Um, and then we can store them okay. up to five days. Can I try oh, one? Of course. Okay, good. Oh my God. It tastes better than it looks, yeah. actually. It's super delicious. And wow. This is like the beginning of the batch cooking. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody mm -hmm. thinks like a batch cook and meal prep is just like five containers with the same gross right. salad that you're gonna have to eat every single day. And right. that's not true. It's like having a series of proteins, yes. a series of fruits and vegetables and things that you could just grab very quickly. Yeah. And this is something that obviously you can have for breakfast. Mm -hmm. You can have two of them for breakfast with a side of berries. Okay. You can have it for dinner or lunch with uh -huh. a side salad. Mm -hmm. You can, two or three of them. You can mm -hmm. have one as a snack. Yeah. It's just like super versatile and like easily stored. Yes. So the next thing we're gonna do is shredded chicken. Yes. Okay, so, gotta be honest with you. This, this really grosses me out. I am not a fan of the raw meat. Well. But it's because I don't like watching the transformation from raw to cooked. So I think this is great. I can just leave it in there and, and not think about it. 100%. This is for you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give you the Oh, tongs. thank God. Okay, I don't have to touch this with my hands. <laughs> yep. All right. So it's okay. two pounds of chicken. Chicken is a great source of protein. And we're going to use some neutral spices here. So some garlic powder and some pepper. Mm-hmm. And some salt. Okay. And then... We are going to add chicken broth. You could also do vegetable broth. Okay. Uh, just don't do water because then it will have no, no flavor okay. and you will be miserable. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> then you will wonder why you did this. Yeah. And so then we're just going to put it four hours on high. Good. And once I do this, I do not have to look at it until it's done. That's right. 
So, this is done. Uh-huh. Okay, now, Vanessa, I've actually never shredded chicken before. Oh, I'm gonna show you. A lot of our members know I, I like eating healthy, but yeah. I don't enjoy cooking that much. So this is great so far, but how do I shred? Okay, so you're gonna take both okay. of your forks, okay. and you're gonna go right here. See in the sits, okay. Opposites, and then All you're right. just going to pull. Okay. So you can just pull it, you can have as little pieces or as big oh. pieces as you'd like. Okay, this is actually working. Yes, it is wow. working. It is. You're a genius. I mean, <laughs> you know, we season this really uh -huh. neutral uh -huh. so that we could repurpose this chicken for later. So okay. I usually have this as my emergency protein in my refrigerator. Yes, great right? idea. And so then you could use it to make tacos, uh -huh. burritos. You could also just like put this on top of a salad later. Yeah, yeah. You could boil some pasta and put that on the side mm -hmm. and then also have some vegetables. So it doesn't need to be this like perfectly plated chicken right, breast, right? right? And yeah. it doesn't, and it doesn't have to be made today, mm -hmm, right? You can mm -hmm. just make it and then have it for later. Yeah, and I love this. This is one of those principles of meal prepping. You want to be able to repurpose things. So the fact that we didn't overly season this or you know right. do a too elaborate of a recipe That's right. makes it really easy for us to use That's this right. for many different meals. Very easy. Right, so coming up next, you're gonna make a sauce. Cilantro avocado sauce. Yum. That could go on the chicken. Exactly. See, this is how we meal prep. So I'm gonna start with the avocado. Okay. So you're gonna do a quarter, mm -hmm. so half of a half. Okay. That looks so Beautiful. nice and fresh. And this is a healthy fat. Healthy fat, yep. exactly. But you know, the serving size, which I tell people all the time, mm -hmm. is a quarter. Okay. Right? And so, but a whole one, if you, uh -huh. eat, if you eat an entire avocado, it would be 10 grams of fiber. Okay. But it would be really high in saturated fat, so we want to stick to that right. quarter of, right. of it. So okay. then you're going to add the cilantro. Okay. Just whole like this? Whole like that. Okay. Stems and all. Okay. Ooh, this is pot. easy. I know. I like to make things easy. <laughs> Garlic. Okay. Now, you know, I'm half Italian and we love our garlic, so could I do more than this if I wanted? Yes. Okay. It's just that you know. Everybody right. is particular and they might think this is spicy. Right. I would probably do six cloves. But right, two, right, okay. Two is fine. <laughs> two is fine. <laughs> then we're gonna do a plain Greek yogurt. And so, Ooh. you know, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates uh -huh. help to keep you full. So where are we getting the protein from? We have to get it from the, the yogurt. Greek yogurt. Exactly. Okay. So it's about 21 grams of protein. Okay. You have the fat from the avocado. Yeah. Some flavor. It's great. So now we're gonna add some salt. Okay. Lime juice. Ooh. And a little bit of water, about two thirds of a cup. So I'm just going to smooth this out. I personally like it to be like a little bit chunky. Okay. But, you know, the to each their own. Exactly. The <laughs> preference is yours. Yes. Yeah. So just like, just look at that. Smell that. Oh my gosh. It smells like I'm in a restaurant. Uh, no. This I know. This was so easy to make. <laughs> so I have some here okay, for you okay, to taste. Thank you so Please much. Taste. Okay. Mmm. Yeah. So good. I love this. Yep. You can put that on top mm -hmm. of a green bowl. You mm -hmm. can put that inside of a sandwich, like a you know a turkey wrap or mm -hmm. something. You, I would put it on a salad too. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of our members talk too about how they have all those staples, like they have the chicken or they have the ground beef or even even pastas and salads, but they're looking to jazz things up. So this is a great way. This is so flavorful. Totally. It's beautiful. Yeah. I bet the store is great in the fridge too. Five days in the fridge, or you can also just you know, portion it out into Ziploc bags if you want to make a oh. number of them and okay. just like date them. And then you can just keep pulling them out. Cause that's the other thing. Maybe you're not going to want this every week, right? but it's nice to have it in your arsenal and just yes. know you can put it out and it stores really great and you can put it on anything. Amazing. Thanks Vanessa. I'm so glad. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes. Well, coming up next, I'm sharing a few exercises from our January fitness challenge. So stay tuned. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You'll get one beautiful get life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I wave. love riding the This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs>
Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Um, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. It's a new year and we're focusing on building healthy habits for both our mind and body. I'm going to walk you through a few exercises to strengthen the upper body, lower body, and finally, the core. And the best part, you don't need any equipment. We're gonna get started with a modified push-up. This is a push-up on your knees. So lowering down onto the mat, we're gonna line the wrists up with the front of the mat. Then shift your shoulders forward over your wrists and bring the knees back a couple of inches behind the hips. Pull the abs in tight, and then we're gonna lower down, chest towards the floor, elbows out to the sides, and press up. Lower down and press up, good. This is modified because we're on our knees to take pressure off of the wrists and make this a little bit easier. Great job. Now the next move is arm circles. And you might say, gosh, well how can I work my arms if I don't have any weights? Well, let me tell you, if you do this for 60 seconds, forwards and backwards, you are gonna feel the burn. This is something super simple that you can do while you're waiting for something to microwave, while you're stirring something on the stove and waiting for it to boil. You can lift your arms up and start to do arm circles, or you can even do this while you're waiting in line. The next exercise starts with a squat, but we move the squat by turning it into a walking squat. So we're gonna start with the feet as wide as the hips. Pull the abs in, reach the glutes back, coming into that squat. Then we're gonna step to the side and bring the foot into the squat position and lower down. Then we're gonna step to the side, bring the foot to meet it in the squat position and lower down. You can go side to side with this and just make sure you do that squat as you bring the feet back into the squat position. Great job. Next, we're gonna do something similar, but this time with a lunge, but not just any lunge, we're gonna do a half lunge. So we're gonna start with one foot forward and one foot back, feet as wide as the hips. We're gonna bend both knees halfway, so about a 45 degree angle here, as opposed to a full lunge with that 90 degree angle. So this halfway lunge here, and then we're gonna step forward and lower down into that half lunge. And then you can turn around and do this again, walking forward about five times with each leg. So here we go in that half lunge, and then we step into the half lunge, and we step into the half lunge. Great job. Now, the last exercise we're gonna do is for the core. So we're gonna get down on the ground. Now again, this is a total full body workout without any equipment. So lowering down onto your back, what we're gonna do next is lift the legs up, pull the abs in by taking a deep breath in, exhale, pull that navel in towards the spine. Now from here, we're gonna curl up and reach towards one foot, lowering the other foot down, and then switch and reach up. Good, switch and reach up, switch and reach up. It's okay to lower the shoulder blades a little bit as you're switching the legs, and then you curl up higher to reach towards the toes. If you can't touch the toes, and if you're touching the shins, that's okay too. Great job, everyone. I hope you feel stronger with these exercises. Coming up, I'll be answering our viewers' burning questions. Stay with us. NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels the like. Latest the latest bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are. 
NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Welcome back. Our Start Today community is unbelievable. I am so proud of everyone that's involved at every step of the journey. So many questions come up as we reach our health and wellness goals, and I thought I'd answer a few today. First up, our viewer Heather sent in a question. With the weather change, how can we change our walks to still walk every day in a safe way? Well, Heather, that's a great question, and I'm a huge fan of using your environment to help you reach your fitness goals. So if you want, bundle up, put on layers, add on your hat, mittens, scarf, and go outside for your walk, but maybe keep it shorter than you would on the warmer days. Or you can plan out your week, look at the weather, and go for short walks or longer walks when the weather's warmer, and then take your workout inside when it's just too cold outside. You can simply walk in place, or you can do some strength training at home. Another community member, Lisa, asked, If you get sidelined by an injury and can't walk, how can you get your cardio in? All right, well, we're gonna do some punches, also overhead presses, and some arm circles. All of these options are forms of upper body cardio. So they're gonna get your heart rate up without you even having to move your legs or walk. You can do these seated if you want as well. Now, because the arms have smaller muscles in them than your legs, they are going to tire more quickly, but I would recommend doing 30 seconds on and then 30 seconds off for 10 minutes. Next, Lisa asked, how do I stretch properly before and after exercising? So to stretch before exercising, I recommend dynamic stretching. So I'm gonna show you a dynamic stretch for the hip flexors. Before walking, you wanna mimic the motion that you're gonna be doing. So we're moving forward and then coming back to center to stretch that hip flexor. Another stretch that you can do before walking is butt kicks to stretch out those quads because we're using the quads to walk. Now, after your workout or after your walk, you wanna hold the stretch. This is called static stretching. We've already worn warmed up, we've loosened up the muscles, and now we are soothing the muscles and relaxing them. Similarly, you can hold that lunge for 10 to 20 seconds after your workout or after your walk to feel that stretch. Another viewer, Tisha, asked, if someone has knee pain, how do they go about healing from that in order to start walking regularly. Do this one exercise if you have knee pain. I want you to point your leg forward and squeeze your quad to pull your kneecap up and in proper alignment. Then slowly lift the leg up and lower it down. Engaging the quad and primarily working the lower part of the quad which helps to keep the kneecap stabilized. You can do this in the morning, right when you get out of bed, just stand up out of bed, place your hand on the nightstand or on the dresser, or place your hands on your hips. 10 on each side. And lastly, Ashley sent in a question. I work at a hospital, so I'm always tempted by treats, candy, you name it. Suppliers give us food. Providers give us food, and of course the patients give us food, and we can't turn that down. How do I avoid these temptations? Please help. Well, Ashley, instead of hearing those sweets calling your name, the candy and everything when you're walking by, I want you to hear me in your ear saying protein, protein, protein. Protein is the key to help keep sugar cravings at bay. So you wanna make sure that you're eating protein with every meal and snack. And I'd recommend that you set an alarm so that you're eating protein every three to four hours. Set your alarm for nine for breakfast, 12.30 for lunch, four for a snack, and seven o'clock for dinner. 
We accomplished so much today. From Karen's transformation to Vanessa's tips and all of the great viewer questions, it looks like we have all we need to start today in the best way. We hope you'll join us next time on Start Today. We are so excited to get started with cooking in today food. But before we do, before we do that, we're just going to take one second and shout out our new executive yes, producer. Talia is in the house. We just want to say, hey, welcome Happy to today. Happy first day. It's her first day of school. Go, we're, Talia. We're so happy you're here. She's here. You know who else we're so happy to have? If, well, she's not at the ranch hanging out yeah. with her family or filming <laughs> episodes of her hit Food Network show. Reed Drummond is busy coming up with easy and delicious meals for you and your family. Reed's the star of The Pioneer Woman and a best-selling author of seven cookbooks. Her latest is called The Pioneer Woman Cooks Super Easy. It's 120 shortcut recipes for dinners, desserts, and more. We've missed yes, you. Hi, we're so we happy you you're guys. here. It is so, I just feel like I'm seeing old friends, and it's just so happy. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I love it. We, okay, first of all, we have to say congratulations. Yes. Your, your daughter got married. Oh my gosh, How thank sweet. you. How I was know. that? It was so much fun. I mean, it, it was. We did it on the ranch, which was a crazy idea. We sort of <laughs> built this huge tent out there, but it was fun. And the the great thing is, it was a lot of work. But the day of, we were just able to let the process happen and enjoy it. It wasn't stressful. Did you and do any, did, you didn't do any cooking for it, did you? No. Good, you just no, relaxed. No, no, no. I, know, sure. I was going to say, who did sure. rehire as the yeah. That's why I was able to relax and have fun. Yeah, right. And right. to so. watch your husband walk her down the aisle. Oh, we yes. know he's been recovering yeah. from an accident. It must yeah. have been special. It, it was wonderful. I mean, it was a blessing. We, it, that's my favorite picture of the two oh, of them. Um, he was a little stiff then. He's, he's <laughs> doing much better. He's on his horse today, so everything's okay, great. Back We're on the horse. Very, very All right, All right. What are we going to cook? Oh my gosh, okay. Okay, so now that Hoda has eaten a whole chocolate I know. cake today, no, um, it's really good. Why is everybody making fun of you? I don't, I don't appreciate that. I don't, thank you, Jen. If I, I think you would have supported would have me. It was really quiet, and then all of a sudden, the cake was gone. And <laughs> But you I, should see what she does to chips. Oh, I well, you know, <laughs> you know it's what? morning. It's happening again. You have the rest of the day to work it off, right? Exactly. So will. after the cake, I thought it'd be great to make some vegetables. So I'm going to do a sheep pan gnocchi Yummy. dinner. And okay. what I love about it, my cookbook, really, I'm not afraid to use shortcut ingredients. So. My favorite ingredient is this is store bought gnocchi. Oh, so and is this frozen or you just no, get it? No, it's actually shelf stable, believe oh. it or not. So you can uh, you buy just it. Throw it in there. Wait, yeah. are you, is this a joke? <laughs> what you just did? Out. You just dumped everything on See, the sheet pan? Everything on the sheet pan. I thought you had to boil oh, it. Oh, just... no, 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 because we're going to roast it. Oh. So then What's I've that got. Pesto? Yes, pesto. <gasps> I'm going to mix it with olive oil. Oh. Did I'm trying not to get pesto on you, so I moved it away from your beautiful. Wait, can you buy the pesto or did you make that? No, bought the pesto. See, I like everything. So yeah, she's speaking happened. our language. Yeah, I mean, during the pandemic, you know, I, I mm -hmm. kind of burned out on cooking a little bit because there were Didn't so we many all? kids around. Is that it? Yeah, so they, that's it. Because pesto is so flavorful, it has garlic and, and you know, and the, of course, the And do you need to oil the, the pan? Did you already oil it? You don't it? have to because there's oh. plenty of olive oil in the pesto mixture. So you basically, mix it all around mix like it all that. Around, and then look how Wait. beautiful it looks. Oh, my gosh. Jenna. We have to pull taste. it out of the oven. So. I like to do a little balsamic. Do you want us to help you? Oh, yes, Yes, please. help me and grab there some Parmesan shavings. So do you just, that? I love balsamic. Yes. I do too. everything I do. on anything. And you know what? I used to make my own by just reducing balsamic mm, for yeah. hours and the house would smell like vinegar and my kids would be like, what is that smell? Doing? This so, is kind of crispy. It's delicious, isn't it? And see how all the oh veggies got beautiful color. Mm. Mm. But it's such We're, an easy meal and I would totally just eat this, but. Wait. We could do this too, which is huge. Look at what we just in did. In one second. Put it in the oven, is dress this basil? it. Basil? What did you add? Oh, tore basil. Yep. Yeah. And I, I'm so lazy, I don't even want to chop basil anymore. You just chop <laughs> it. By the way, I like it on the exactly. Oh, should we go dish. around the back? Yeah, more? we have another recipe. Okay, okay. great. Honestly, so mm -hmm. sheet pans are kind of my thing. I okay. love them. They're, they're just, I, I get nervous if I don't have 20 ready to go at mm -hmm. all times. So this is a sheet pan salad, and I love this concept mm. because you basically roast. Any veggie you want, it's it's the squash time of year. Oh, so yes. this is a mixture of cubed butternut squash Yum. and delicata squash. I love delicata squash. What is that? I'm obsessed with it. Me too. Do you ever so put it on it? toast? 
Oh, wait. Yeah, mash, mash yes. it up. Yes. What are you talking it's about? It's just a looking, squash. This is what it looks like. And oh, it's basically store? kind oh. of an heirloom type okay. of squash. But the great thing is you can eat the skin. It gets really tender. Ah. So butternut, it can be a little bit tough, Should not I do, very tasty. I add yes. Some? Drizzle and then we're salt gonna do pepper. another roasted vegetable situation, salt and pepper, Italian seasoning. This is so brilliant. Wow. And this then is just so toss. brilliant. But here's what's fun about what? it. So roast it and it's like 450, 25, 30 minutes. Okay. And look how gorgeous. So that's delicious on its own, but I build a salad oh, out of this. Thank you. So basically, you make your own dressing too, don't you? Well, sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes I doctor sometimes. up bottled dressing. So but I'm using the roasted vegetables as a base for mm, a salad. Yeah, it's delicious. Mm. Isn't it good? Yes. Oh, and the dressing mm -mm. is tahini, mm. mustard, lemon juice, olive oil, honey. Okay. And then, isn't it pretty? Ten okay. plus. Ten plus plus. Pomegranate seeds. seeds. Yep. Mm. Yep. Pistachios. Pistachios, pomegranate mm. seeds. So I love is, pomegranates. It's pretty at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And then goat cheese, which Hoda Wait. doesn't love. Wait, thank you. Well, Hoda well, likes it. It, it just doesn't love her. Yeah. Okay. There's a thank lot of TMI so in much. this segment. <laughs> There's a lot about Hoda. <laughs> anyway. Bree, <laughs> thank you so much for these recipes. Head to today.com slash food. And for Bree's new book, it has recipes just like this one. Head to today.com slash shop. Contributor and chef Alejandro Ramos is here with comfort foods mm. to warm us up as it gets cold. And if you want to cook along with us, just scan the QR code to order all of these ingredients in just one click. Select Get Ingredients and then schedule a pickup or delivery. You can do that Ooh, today. Right there. I know, it's it's great. Person. Alejandra, this smells so delicious. Thank I you. love pot pies, especially when you can work in, you know, yes. some extra veggies. Although this mushroom kind of freaks me it's out. It's kind a of fun, bit. right? Yeah, it's a this. yummy yeah. one. It's a yummy mushroom. What's great about this is you can use any kind of mushroom. So you can use the classic button mushrooms mm -hmm. or go for something a little bit fancy like an oyster or mm. shiitake. You can get the um, mix. Mix it up. Yeah, and so all you want to do is you kind of want to do a nice little rough chop on these, right? Doesn't mm -hmm. have to be anything. They break down perfect. quite a bit when you cook they them. They break down a lot. So you're using, you're going to see all these mushrooms are going to go in there, okay. but that heat is going to pull out all of that water. Okay. Uh, also, when you're adding, you know, like a little bit of olive oil and salt, that pulls out all that water. Okay. So what do you have in here? Here is just we've got some carrots, some onions, and some celery, basically mm -hmm. the base of your dish. Then you add your mushrooms in, right? And I'm going to okay. cheat. I'm not going to do all of them right mm -hmm. now because of. It does need time to cook yes. down. And then once those mushrooms cook down a lot, then you add the garlic. You don't I think I've it. overcooked yes. my garlic because I well, think I've been yeah. putting it in with it. Exactly. You don't want to do the garlic at the top because then it can burn and it yeah. can get bitter and then that flavor is going to be yeah, in the whole uh, the dish. And, right. Okay. And Chef, this is like very hearty, right? So it's good for fall? Yeah, it's a great fall dish. And what I love about it, it's like mushrooms are, they're meaty, right? So they're mm. really satisfying. And I love that they're just really filling. And you can add other things to it too. So if you've got leftover rotisserie chicken or you want to add a little bit yeah. of Italian sausage to it, go ahead and do that. I love it vegetarian. Mm -hmm. I think it's fantastic. And it's all in one pot. Once too, the veggies nice. are cooked, you add some flour. This is oh, going to help thicken it. I was wondering. It. Yeah, so that's what it is. That's going to thicken it. So, okay. uh, Dylan, sure. if you want to give it like a little bit of a mix there. Okay, so then flour. We're doing some chicken broth. Chicken oh. broth. And then you can do, this is optional, but you can do a little, um, like a little sherry or oh, a little brandy. Okay. It adds a nice flavor to it, mm -hmm. right? And this is just going to great. Ooh, this smells great. For, I mean, it already smells yeah. great, right? It, does, <laughs> yeah. it smells like fall. It smells it like cozy okay. times. Uh, and then you're going to add some great herbs. Okay. So here we've got some chopped up rosemary, some mm -hmm. sage, some thyme, all those wonderful winter herbs. And then this is my little favorite trick. Mm. Is so this? this is nutmeg. Okay. A whole oh, nutmeg. Okay. You can buy the ground. I was just buy it in the thing. I know. You can do I mean, yeah, totally go for it. And it lasts I know. It's Ever fun. You like it grate it in. Okay. That goes right in. Okay. And it adds this wonderful little sort of touch of like subtle warmth to it. Oh, we got a minute left. We got yeah, okay. So it gets really nice and thick. And then you put your puff pastry right on top. Everything is in the can pot. Can we try this? Can we try this? Please try it in. Yeah. Talk to us about the dessert too, though. So the same same pastry? So yeah. So then over here, now I've got a dessert version. So you can use either store but pie crust or puff pastry. Okay. And this is an apple pie empanada. Oh mm. I grew up eating empanadas for everything. We basically just put everything in dough. Yeah. Uh, right? You, Tom, <laughs> no, you no, understand? I was going to say, <laughs> and this dish is like, think of a, of a McDonald's apple pie, but yes, way that, better. Exactly. Very similar. Yeah, very similar. Exactly. Oh so there you go. It's okay. like a little, it's the a McDonald's apple pie with a Latin this twist. To another next level. Level. Doesn't it just, it just totally elevates oh my those goodness. flavors. It's good. Yeah. And, and, and Chef, I, I just have one question. Yeah. It's okay to cook with bling. Right? It is okay. I was I was watching you go. I was watching you go going, I love this. This is Right. You know, you know, I, I bring my bling everywhere. She's coming to all the kitchen. That's what I do. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app.
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love the ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're digging into some of the New York Times' most popular recipes. That's right. More than a 1,000 dishes and drinks dating all the way back to the 1850s can be found in the one-of-a-kind mm -hmm. book, The Essential New York Times Cookbook. Amanda Hesser is a former food editor at The Times and the founder of The Food 52. She spent years trying and tasting all these recipes. Tough job, Amanda. Amanda, tough how, job. On I know, earth, tough, yeah. how on earth yeah. did you ever narrow it down, my gosh, with all those recipes? Well, I talked to readers. Yeah. I, mean, I asked readers what their favorites were. Yeah. The Times helped me, also fellow writers. So I, you know, I, I took a lot of opinions. Show the book. Hold it yeah. up. It's a okay. I mean, Well, it's too heavy. It, I mean, this is like. Okay. It's about a thousand. It's just short of. Oh my! It's yeah. the biggest book yeah. I've ever seen. It, in my <laughs> it's got it all. It's, it's got it all. All right, but you. Yes. Okay. How did you pick one. these two? So, by the way? Well, yeah. so these are some of your favorites. Are, yes, in in the new edition. And so this is a uh, spicy beef stir fry, and it can mm. be as spicy as you want. Okay. Um, so the first thing you do is you want to um, mm -hmm. grind uh, garlic and. Um, it, Chilies to a paste. Okay, if you don't, mash if you, it up. Yes, if you don't have a mortar and pestle, and you're going to add yeah. them to the oil. Oh, I like the sizzle. Uh, you can just do it in a food processor. Okay. Um, okay. And so if you well, are not, if you. Turn to the century <laughs> style here. Yes. You want me to yes. Actually, yeah, actually, that would be great. But let me um, mm. scrape more of this out. All I right. know it's really good. fragrant. The you're, whole dish is super fragrant. Okay. okay. All right. So you, you, as soon as that starts getting nice oh, and fragrant, yeah. you don't yeah. want it to brown. Mm. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, we are going to um, add. Actually, you know what? Let me we're going to we're going to add the we're going to add the nope, not yet. That's okay. that's some chicken <laughs> stock. It. But I'm going to turn <laughs> this up because we okay. want to. Do you want to add? Do you want to add the beef? Yes, okay. I'll do it. Okay, I'll do you it. Do you're going to do it with this. Right, okay, I'm in. I'm so, what here. kind of beef did you pick? This is tenderloin. tenderloin. And you want to slice it nice and thin so mm -hmm. that it cooks really quickly. Uh, I'm going to. This is chicken stock. I've got okay. there. You want to add some things? Here? I would love to. Yeah. Okay, great. So, this is oyster sauce. You tell me sauce. when. Just add it all in. Yeah, into that or into no, the. Into here. Here. Okay, okay. Oyster, sauce. oyster sauce. Yep. Yep. And then, and then you're gonna, it's a little sticky. That's okay. And then soy sauce. And then fish sauce. Yum. Okay. And that, you can just oh, pour umami. that right in. It's like umami yes, it is. Profile. And then you've is that got enough, or should I put Al, how is it over there? Well, you're doing great. This done. is fantastic. Did you eat so yours is, already? What's about? <laughs> Listen, it has. That's why Hoda's <laughs> leading the segment because we can't let her eat it. You know eats what? Everything. That is not right. kind. Right. Say goodbye. Right, eat the whole thing. So this is so um, light brown oh, sugar. No. If you okay. can get palm sugar, use that. You want to give that a little whisk. A little whisk. And how long do you cook this? Okay. You know what? It looks super quick, right? Yes. You want to. It's a very quick dish. So you want to add. Yeah, you're doing great. Yeah. So you basically want to coat the beef with the. Cooking got fat, it. Which got is vegetable it. Vegetable oil. You okay. just use a neutral oil. Now, when do we nice. pour in Carson? Pour, you, go Carson. Is this go like Carson. a modern yes. wok? This yes. Ah, <laughs> this looks it's yummy. Sort of a modified wok. So you yeah. let okay, that. So, so now we're gonna let that okay. cook, and okay. you're gonna just cook the beef through. Uh huh. And then you're gonna add. This is macroot lime leaves, which are oh, super. Have you, you ever smelled these? You gotta no. smell these. Can I smell? Wow. <laughs> They're really amazing. That is fragrant. They're really amazing. Can I smell? Okay. Try this, Hoda. All right. Is it crazy? So you add those. It's just rice and. Okay. Oh my God. Um, mm. So you want to right, oh God, right, right, right. Ridiculous. And then you're gonna add. I just basil stopped leaves. listening. It's okay. so good. Mm. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Oh my God. That's most All right. So give that a toss, of the and then that is it. Mm. Yes. That's okay. the dish. And you want to serve over rice. Right. Mm. We're gonna move over here. Delicious. All right. Yeah. What okay. is this rice? That's got a risotto almost. Okay. So this and and. Uh, okay, well, I'll get back to that. But so this okay. this recipe is by Amini Ramachandran, mm -hmm. and it's um, it's called uh, it's mm -hmm. a southern Indian dish, and it's called curd rice. So mm. can I put you to work again? Oh man! Okay, Come sorry. On. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta put, you gotta, uh, okay. uh, put the, this is yogurt, yogurt and, and rice? Co cooked rice, and you just want to mix Dump it, it up, in? and you want to serve it. It's actually served cold. Wait, what? 
Okay, great. Wow. So we've got we've got some oil in here, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. oops, did I just break this? Okay, mm -hmm. probably okay. not. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> and, okay, so you want to okay. heat the oil, okay. and and then you're going to add mustard seeds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are the black mustard seeds. And as soon that, as that's Greek yogurt in the rice, is that what it is? Yeah, you can use you whatever kind yogurt of yogurt in. Yeah, you did. Yeah, use you know any kind of yogurt you like. You can use slavne. And then, uh, so just stir it up. Okay, it's um, already ready. All right, and then as soon as these start popping, mm -hmm. the, the mustard seeds, we're gonna add um, uh, irodal and chana dal mm -hmm. and, and cashews. So right. I'm gonna add those. We're basically just like toasting the spices and making them fragrant. And can you, Al, say, if you don't have these readily available, can you kind of just use your spice that you prefer? Oh, yeah, you, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you could, yeah. Okay. You could use probably any, I mean, any spices that you out. like. You yeah, I know, but, <laughs> but I'd have some spice. It won't be the recipe, but. Yeah. How do you but navigate this thousand rice. page no, book? Is it separated by chapters? Is there like a chicken oh. chapter? Or no? As you can see, I've, I've I just mean, added a lot of sticky How do you want people to So it's all, yes, it's like chicken, dessert, salads. It's It's organized pretty traditionally. Okay. That is um, but then the recipes in the chapters are organized um, chronologically, What's the crunch in so that you can that? kind that of see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whatever so you this. Put in there. All right. So now we're adding. Going to add freshly. Uh, we're going to add some chilies. Ooh, a little chilies there. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. That's actually. Absorbable. You want it? Hey, man, we're kind of run out of again, time. And, I think we're okay. wrapping it up. Oh, okay. All right. No, what are you wrapping it up? What's the time? Okay. All right. Woo. We have to go. Well, this is getting very exciting. Okay. All right. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. Best-selling cookbook author and chef, our friend Padma Lakshmi. That's right. Her latest cookbook is out right now, and it's called Tomatoes for Neela. And this morning, she's got some great ideas to share for healthy winter dishes. Padma, <clears throat> first of all, it's great to see you. And the ingredient we're starting with that we're focusing on is kale. It's like one of those superfoods. Yes, that's right. It is kale. I love kale. I try to throw it in every dish I have because it's a great hearty but healthy winter uh, green. You know, what I love about kale is that it's great raw, it's great wilted with dressing the next day. It's also wonderful cooked. It has a ton of vitamins, it has vitamin A, it has vitamin C, folate, it has vitamin B, vitamin K, it has a ton of antioxidants. It also has omega-3 uh, fatty um, acids, calcium, potassium, you name it. Okay, and wow. so Ways you can use this hearty, hearty winter green. So I have two kinds of kale here. This is curly kale, mm -hmm. which you guys probably are familiar with. There's lots of uh, types of kale. And then I have this, which is called dragon kale. Dragon or kale. kale. Uh, in Italian, it's called lacinato kale. Mm -hmm. And this is the kale that I like the best. You just want to take the center stem and strip that off and then just chop it. What I like to do is buy the kale whole, 
take, wash it, dry it on kitchen towels, take that center stem off and chop it up and then put it in a bag and leave it in my crisper so it's always ready oh. for me to throw into um, all my soups and salads. You know, sometimes those lettuces are great. Mm -hmm. If you don't finish your salad, you have to throw out the salad. Whereas if you have a salad made with kale, mm. instead of those lettuces, which are mostly water and are still great, but don't have the same nutrients, you can have that salad for two or three days. Hey, Padma, some people, I hear some people massage the kale. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you do that? Uh, I don't massage the kale. I just chop it fine. <laughs> you ain't fancy. All right, so, so what, what are we making? What I'm doing, we're going to bounce around with some recipes just because I'm cooking here. So I have sauteed some just plain yellow onion mm -hmm. with a little cumin seeds and some oil and two red chilies. You see that? Uh -huh. Those are sauteing. And to that, I'm going to add some minced ginger mm. and some minced garlic. And that is going into some lentils, also called dal, which we'll make in a minute. But I just want to get that going. Um, so it browns and cooks nicely. To that, I'm adding a little bit of ground turmeric. You see that? I feel like I'm doing one of those beauty Instagram <laughs> And so I'm going to saute this and let that go. And while that's going, I'm going to show you this salad. Look at this beautiful Yum. salad. Ooh. The mozzarella? Chickpeas. Ready Chickpeas. on today's show. Uh, for you guys a while back on another holiday season. It's just simple. Pomegranate, pearl mozzarella, mm. the mint, some serrano. Mm. It's dressed so basically with just <laughs> olive oil, balsamic, and lime juice. I'm going to take that salad, and I'm going to add a bunch of chopped kale to it. And this salad then becomes more hearty, yeah. and it lasts much longer than any other salad would. And it's filling. Frankly, this would make a great lunch to take to the office or to school the next day. Um, my daughter, Krishna, takes this salad when she's got a field trip and she's the envy of all her mm. teachers. I What's the dressing that. on that? Yeah, and the dressing will wilt the um, kale so that it'll be beautiful the next day. All the juices mm -hmm. from the mozzarella and the pomegranate season that kale with the dressing. And look how beautiful that is. Mm. It's don't, you love it. don't you love the kale? Because it, it even wilted or even chopped up like that, it holds up against yeah. the dressings and sauces. It, it stays robust and doesn't wilt away. Exactly. Now you can see how these onions and ginger and garlic are frying and breaking down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got about 10 or 15 seconds. I would add pancetta this, to yeah. that, but that's me. Yeah. So I'm just going to add some tomato to that. Uh -huh. And here I have some yellow lentils. Oh, that I yum. Love that. Salt. I'm adding kale to that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like, I want that. this. I want this for me breakfast. Too. A stew, which is yum. basically But you could do chicken or beef, and I'm adding kale to that. Love it. There you go. Thank you, Pod. Pod Pod we got to run. Yummy. We got to run. But all of these dishes are going to be on our website. Looks real good. Today.com slash food. You get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. I love you too. <laughs>
Gabby Duncan. She's a chef creator of the popular What's Gabby Cooking blog. She gained a huge fan base, nearly 900,000 followers on Insta alone. She's got a new cookbook, Take It Easy. It's filled with no fuss, crowd pleasing recipes. Gabby, you've been at this for 13 years. You got four 13. cookbooks, you got a baby daughter, and now you're taking it. Easy. Yes. I like that. What is yeah. this like part of the part of life that you're in right now? Well, I just feel like post COVID, you want to have everyone yeah. around your table, and it doesn't matter what you're putting on as long as it's flavorful. Flavorful. It's about like having people around your table and being happy. I love that. So you're talking about a kind of a hamburger helpery kind of meal. So what do we start with? So I grew up in Tucson, Arizona, and it gets Wait, cold. Wait, like, what? I know. Yeah. You I know. Have, have we have, talked about we this? We have. It's okay. like my favorite place in America. Okay. But we would make okay. this when it was cold for like the four days of oh, the year. It's cold. Days. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little chilly. We okay. get excited when it it's dips it. below 70. Yes, it's truly an exciting day. But right. so instead of buying it from a box, we're just making it from scratch and like okay. packing even more flavor in here. So what do you got ground beef. First thing, we're just gonna saute some ground beef and like let it really spread out so it, it can are you get. Putting it in oil or anything or just oil. Okay, and we're gonna want to like really brown it and then we're okay. just gonna add some seasonings in there. What's so that? We've got some smoked paprika. We've got some oregano. We'll season it with salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna like toast those spices. Okay. And then. We can dump that into this bowl Just right dump here. Dump that into that. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna show you how to dice up an onion with this very sharp knife and try not to slice. Should I leave my this on or turn? Yeah, no, you can leave it on because all the like oh. remnant spices in there. Okay. We're gonna add some onion in there and just sweat it out. You want to throw the rest of these spices what is in this? there. What's so going it's on more here? oregano, more paprika. In here? Yep, in okay. there. And Garlic. Then, Right, no garlic, uh -huh. and, and then the rest of the smoked paprika, okay. and we're just gonna put the onion so in there. So I'm just as cooking well. spices. Yeah, right we're now. toasting them up, and then we're gonna add the onion right in and just okay. like let it sweat. Okay, so now Saute that's happening. It, and that's gonna be like the base of the flavor. Okay, and then so over here, this is what happens when it's already cooked. Nice okay. job turning You're it on. Welcome. Okay, so You're I'm welcome. gonna thicken this up a little bit mm -hmm. and add some flour. Okay. And then while I do that, we're gonna toast the flour, cook it off, and you'll stir in the beef broth. Just beef broth. Okay. Yeah. So we're cooking. So the ground beef is still not. Here. The ground beef we're gonna add in. Actually, we grab it because we need it for this next step. So the the pasta is like oh. hard, like it's it's not oh, cooked. It's gonna, cook in the pan. it's gonna cook uh, in the broth wow. with some tomatoes. Take a long time. Listen, you, just, what, one crushed? last pot: crushed tomatoes, chopped tomatoes, whatever. It's gonna cook a little I bit more. I love how you don't care. Just put it in. No, that's see, that's why it works. It easy. And yeah. then Take it easy. once this cooks a little bit more, we'll add the beef now, back can I ask in. Now, question: Are you putting a lid on this and letting it boil? Hundred percent. You're gonna let it boil, and the steam that's made. Is going to help uh, cook the pasta. And then you add the ground beef. Correct. Stir it all together. Continue okay. seasoning it up. with salt and pepper. Mm. And then this is what it's going to look like look over at here. Look that. I know. Creamy, I know. delicious. So we're look at extra. The cheese. Yeah. Look at that block what of is that? What kind is that? Parmesan. Oh. We've got some look cheddar. At, oh. What are you doing? <laughs> some cheddar. And That's all like the that cheddar. It's cheese. heavy cream. Heavy cream. <laughs> this is why it tastes so good. Heavy girl, this is how you make it. It's really quite extra. And we'll add the beef back in here. Oh, wait. Not the beef for like a turkey or turkey, a chicken? Turkey, tofu, no. chicken. Why bother? You've already put no. beef. I mean, what do you want to save on? Look at this. <laughs> this is amazing. It's an aggressive dish, but it's so good. you bake the whole thing you, in the oven? You could, but like you don't girl. have to. Oh, what go you ahead. What you do is put like some taco seasoning you in there. Could, Speaking of the Southwest, taco shells and put it on oh, top. Wait, yeah. what? Tucson hamburger helper. Yes. I mean, we're oh just. Oh my God, that is so thick. Is it yummy? Yeah. It, it's it a is, nice, like, like easy you, weeknight meal. Yeah, oh my, you can make this other, in, like, what, 20 what's minutes. What's your other favorite recipe in your book? Oh, my God. The fried chicken sandwiches are truly okay. phenomenal. Wait, that. what do you mean? They're just like, it's the best brine. It's the best fried chicken. There's all these amazing sauces on it. Pickles, it's so... I mean, I love every recipe yeah. in the book. They're like all my baby, like yeah. it's a baby. I, I, I birthed that thing. How, but old's your, how old's your baby, by the way? Poppy is one and a half. Wow. You hit when someone grills you and you're, you're doing I'm it. I'm like, I don't and know. Like, the oh, there she so is. Cute. Yeah. She's very Bye. cute. Guys, you can get a copy of that great book, Take It Easy Today, uh, dot com slash books. Find a recipe at today dot com slash food. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you. Uh -huh. Great. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of asking, man, yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. Yeah. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I 